hey guys, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hold on, I think I got it all good now. Welcome to Mog Talk, guys. If you're unfamiliar with Mog Talk, it is a show based around the Final Fantasy XIV community discussing everything from Savage Raiding to Chuckabo Racing. Uh, and today we are going to be talking about job balance and raid balance within Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, and before we go too much further, I do want to introduce all of our guests here, or have them at least introduce themselves. Zeno, would you mind telling everybody who you are? Um... I'm Zenosis. I play this game, uh, Final Fantasy XIV. I strive to be an intense, uh, mad, raging, bald, but a cute strummer. Cute strummer. That's what I strive to be. Okay, okay. All right. Arthas? Yo, what's up? Uh, just your regular 41, turning 42 year old guy playing video games and yowling on in front of the screen. Thanks for mm -hmm. watching. Uh, and thanks for watching this channel today. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a pretty basic uh, you know, explanation. I feel like you guys are really underselling yourselves, but all right, Momo, can you do who are you? Hey, my name is Momo, I'm a content creator for Fafis 14. Uh, the only reason I'm here is to keep things grounded when these two pop the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Today I'm a I spectator. Mean, Today uh, I'm a spectator. Today I'm a spectator. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I, I think maybe that that's true, though. Uh, all right, guys. So there's been a ton of talk about job balance in Final Fantasy XIV, and this raid tier is um, it has done some damage to some people. Uh, we've had groups completely fall apart, uh, and it's. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Alexander back with, what was it, A3S days a little bit. Uh, yeah, Living Liquid. Yeah, Living rough. Liquid killed people. Yeah, I mean, even, uh, what was it, the uh, door, door boss for A1S killed people, killed groups. Oh, didn't Faust, it? yeah, that yeah, was Faust. the original. <laughs> man, uh, I'll never forget, like, the first, like, week, or the first, like, week, two weeks, man, it was all Faust prog on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. It was the you best. Know, you know, yeah, 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 you know the... Uh, Heaven's World was the very first time I stream, right? So I, I stream one week before Savage. Then I start to like talk about how I'm going to be raiding, how like introducing myself, blah, blah, right? So the moment Savage came out the next week, I was like, holy shit, this directory is saturated. You know, when before Savage came out and when I was playing around Reborn, I watch whenever I go to Twitch.tv uh, and then Final Fantasy XIV, right? It's always just Xeno or, uh, or Happy. And then there's the other two other streamers. So it's like the director is only like four streamers, you know? So when Savage came out, everybody was streaming. There was so many Savage. I was like, holy shit. So this is the beginning of the Final Fantasy XIV Twitch. This is going to be so crazy. The community is going to be so awesome. So much Raiders. And then because my static rate, because I was, I was still in the casual static, so my static rate in the second day, right? So the whole Tuesday, the whole directory was just all files. Everybody just doing files. Nobody is doing oppressor. Every channel I click, they are just doing files. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Faust was hard, man. It was it was tough, dude. People had to actually do some DPS and think about it. Um, which I mean, kind of brings us back into P one or P eight S phase one here, right? That first uh, that that door boss there. But we'll we'll get into it in a second. I I kind of want to do this because some people are already starting. If you're watching us this on YouTube, they've already made five comments about why we shouldn't be doing the show and how we're idiots. Um, Wait. <laughs> What? I'm sure. Huh? I'm sure. Um, so I, I want to get something. Hold on. People ahead, didn't ahead. want you to do a show on on balance after what the fuck just happened. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they, I think they're just afraid. They they look at the show. They look at the guests that are coming on the show, and they're like, "Oh, these guys are just shit, shitty people saying shitty things." I think that's kind of what. It's going to happen. As soon as this video VOD goes up, they're not even going to mm. look at it. They're going to be like, ah, oh, fucking Xeno and Art, this god fucking motherfuckers. Damn. I'm sure. Man, Kill they need to watch that. my stream more because I'm, sometimes I'm cute on my stream. <laughs> <laughs> people need to stop coming Those in with the mentality that I'm, a, that I'm a mean person. Yeah. I strive to be a cute strummer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I give kisses on my chat, you know, I mean, on the, on the stream. You know. <laughs> I do. He's well, definitely different. He changed. Even I don't recognize him sometimes anymore. Actually, you yeah, know what? Yeah, what Final Fantasy XIV does to you. Dude. It does, man. Like, <laughs> no, man. No, man. Like, okay, so maybe that's true for Zeno. But I went to Stow's channel the other day, and she was fucking just ripping in the people, dude. 
But she doesn't like, play as much anymore. She's kind of like she has like that. She kind of like detox herself from it. Oh my! Now God. she has like the true, the true personality. Whereas you know, like he spent too much time with Fortune, so now he's too cute. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, That's well, true. Oh fuck me, dude. My uh, third character is uh, is my main now. Apparently, I spent like over three hundred dollars on the Mog Station. Man, it's it's a trap, dude. Oh, you buy like you know, well it's fun well no 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 it's fucking bullshit because okay all right so one uh one the shit's not account wide which is a bunch of horse shit and two you sometimes you gotta buy a whole outfit just when you want the stockings man it's fucking garbage <laughs> like bro just let me buy the fucking you know stockings <laughs> or something man i don't want this <laughs> stupid fucking top dude so uh to, well, you know what? Let's do Mog Station today. We'll get back to that. <laughs> 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 oh, shit, dude. But I, what I wanted to say was just that we're not game developers at all. All right, guys? We, we understand that. We're not idiots. We, you know, we don't make Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, but I think most of the people on this show, excluding me, uh, are, are pretty well-educated in playing this game. <laughs> and they have a pretty decent handle on what it's like to play this game. Uh, so before you start complaining too much in YouTube channel, give it, give it, give it a few minutes, uh, and, uh, watch the show. Uh, I mean, I don't know, dude, I get tired of hearing that all the time. Every time you have any kind of conversation, you're critical of Final Fantasy 14 or anything like that. People just start jumping on your ass and they're just like, oh, you're, you're an asshole. You're an idiot. You don't understand. You don't work for Square Enix, all this other stuff. Do you guys get that? Uh, you don't listen to that shit, man. You don't listen to that shit. You just you just fucking shadow ban him on your YouTube and fucking ban him from your Twitch <laughs> chat. You just get the get the fuck out of here. We're just never gonna try to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you just yeah. gotta you just gotta expect it. Like every single video I put out, every single anything, man. There's like there's like I don't know. There's like a whole gaggle fuck of people that they're they're probably all in the same Discord and they fucking link my video. Oh, he's just fucking posted one new one, dude. Go in and thumbs down that shit, bro. And they probably fucking do that. Like every single fucking video, immediately when it goes up, I get like 15 dislikes. It's insane. Really? Like oh, 15 wow. oh, or shit. more or some shit. I mean it's yeah, like a it's Reddit too, stupid. too, man. Reddit does yeah, that to me too. It's like it's like holy fuck, yeah. yo, thanks for the Thanks for the interaction. Well, here's the thing. Like, uh, I remember we're going a little off topic at the beginning of this, but I just want to get this out. I remember <laughs> there was one point where there's a whole bunch of people hating. I can't remember exactly who it was, but they're hating someone in particular. And what they would do is they would restream their channel uh, to like a private like streaming service or something, and go and talk shit on that channel about the other channel because they didn't want to give them views. To talk shit about yo, that. that's yo, that's petty, man. Yeah, so what the bad. fuck? There's some petty ass groups out there. Uh, but that being said, uh, you know we're we're here to talk about job balance and raid balance, and it's been like a a a huge topic over the last couple of weeks. And we were thinking about doing this show last weekend, but I'm kind of glad we waited till this weekend because we got more stuff to talk about. Just yeah, what was it two days ago? Yeah. Um. And man, I, I want to start off just with the the patch and the comments about why these changes were made and everything else, and just get your initial thoughts on it. Well, what do you guys think about what they decided to do and why they decided to do it? Well, okay, well, yo, yo, I'll start, sure. yo. So, 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 first off, man, I just you know I just want to say that there's there's certain people that don't think there's a job imbalance. Okay, well, those people are just objectively wrong. They're just fucking wrong. So if you're one of those people, shut the fuck up. You're fucking wrong. If you don't believe, if you still do not believe me, they literally admitted in the fucking, in multiple, uh, the, the patch notes and then the thing after the patch that there was a job imbalance. So there is a fucking job imbalance, man. It's just the only reason why people, well, why more people didn't realize it was because, uh, what was the last raid tier? What was it fucking called? Hesperos or whatever. Yeah, that that <laughs> raid tier. Um, uh, I think it was, was start with an A, didn't it? As well. As Fidelos. There we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah as Fidelos. Yeah. Uh it was so fucking easy that it didn't matter. The job imbalance didn't matter because it was so fucking easy. So it like nobody gave a shit, right? I mean, I still gave a shit, but most people didn't give a shit because it didn't matter. But now, <laughs> now that they put a fucking DPS check in, oh man, now it matters. Now it fucking mattered. Now it showed. So that job imbalance, 
it just hasn't popped up now. It's been it's been here since in Walker came out. It's just the reason why people don't or didn't see it was because there wasn't any type of DPS check. So you could fucking take any comp and based on what they said, right? Like I really enjoyed that. Um, uh, I guess the reasoning, um, for all the changes and stuff. Like, I'm really glad they came out with that. I think it was awesome. They came out with that. And for the most part their their answers and reasoning I felt was like very good. There were a couple things I disagreed on. Um, but, uh, for the most part, I really did feel like that, that they made the, you know, the right, the right decision or whatever. Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> they kind of came to it a little bit too late, but, um, Based on what they said, I do believe them when they said that, uh, like that one or 2% buff or whatever the fuck it was, um, that they gave the boss, if that wouldn't have been there, you could have cleared with probably any comp probably because I remember in week one. So I switched from warrior to gunbreaker, um, because, I mean, Gunbreaker just fucks, <laughs> you know, just fucks, <laughs> dude, you know, I mean, you know, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so, so I switched in and immediately when I switched, I gained like 400 damage. I think one of my best runs, I gained like 450 DPS. That is a lot of fucking damage from a single roll when you're wiping to 0.1 or 2%. Like that's huge. That's just one roll. That even, and that's a tank that doesn't even include like, you know, let's say a caster switch from like, you know, red mage to black mage, you know, that would be huge because if you have a death, any, because if you have a death on that phase anyway, it's probably a wipe. Cause I mean, your damage is too low at that point. So, I mean, the res doesn't kind of doesn't even matter, but, um, my point was, was that like, there definitely was an imbalance, but if it would have released like, how they, you know, said it should have released, then I don't, then I think it would have kind of been like Asphodelos a little bit in the sense that the DPS check would have obviously been easier, but you could have taken any comp. Now, now, now don't get that confused with there's not a DP, there's not an, there's not a balance issue because there's still, it would have been a balance issue. There still would have been, it's just people would not have like really cared or known about it unless they like look deep into it. Um, mm. but I think what happened, uh, I think that there, while it was kind of shit, uh, in some ways, um, you know, for the groups that tried to get week one, they didn't get week one because it was because the, the damage check was so intense. Mm. Um, those people kind of sucked. the people that were working on it and almost got it. And then now they nerfed it. You know, so that took away a little bit of satisfaction, but I feel like that, um, that there, there's, there's still, there still would have definitely been a balance issue. It's just people wouldn't have noticed this as much. So one of the good things I think that did come out of this is that people finally realized, Hey, you know what? Yeah. There's a fucking balance issue. Yeah. And Square, I think will use this information like going forward to make, to make shit better. Yeah. Uh, Definitely, and I, I saw, I did see a lot of animation in Arthur's face. Uh, while oh no, no, talking. no! I was about, I mean, I was listening the whole time, but I think Twitch went down a couple of minutes in between. Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's back already. Now he's back already. Just now there was a connection error to Twitch. Okay, now okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's why I was raising my hand, asking whether you guys have similar problem. No, oh, <laughs> I think it was good. Chat didn't say anything about it, yeah, so now I think it's okay. It was okay. For me. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, geez, it could have been like one of those things where it just flipped out for half a second, but yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I mean, like uh, Arthas, Momo, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's actually funny you bring up the people who are like progging the fight because I actually knew somebody who was on the Enrage of the B8 Part Two, and they they nerfed it like they they nerfed it like the following night, and they're like really like kind of like blood down about it. Oh. oh yeah, I can imagine. Like yeah. you work really hard, and you know fucking you have those like 0.1 percent wipes and like basically whenever you have one of those it just builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up right and then finally when you clear it it's just this like burst of like excitement and then i mean imagine when they when they nerfed it just like you, you go in there and you like one shot it with like a death and you're just like what the fuck it just yeah takes away some satisfaction i would i would imagine yeah uh, I mean that that's definitely a sad part, and no one likes that at all. 
it, it's it's rough. I don't know what well, the right call is there. Well, like, okay, so, and I mentioned this earlier, right? They were like, okay, they were like between a rock and a hard place because they basically, um, in which, you know, I imagine we'll talk about this later too, but but this like two minute meta shit really fucked over some, really fucked over some jobs, man, you know? And like, it's just, it's just kind of weird that they're so hard pressed for that now when the balance was pretty good. Like it was pretty good in Shadowbringers. I just don't know why that they would change. Like, basically, I uh-huh. feel like they made that change, but didn't actually think about the impact that it would have on certain jobs of that change. And it's just, um, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like that uh, uh, it's either they're going to have to change some jobs, which, I mean, I guess they already are because Paladin's supposed to get like a somewhat of a of a rework in 6.3. So that'll be interesting. Um <laughs> Enjoy Actually, your either two minute fight or flight or wreck windows. <laughs> it's it's a good point you bring it up like Shadowbringers because actually when you look at Shadowbringers, a lot of the balance issues were pretty much the same as they are now. Uh the only outlier is the fact that, you know, bursts weren't as I guess static, right? There they weren't like mm-hmm. two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. It's like you had sixties, nineties, twos, threes. So like that ended up giving jobs like Warrior Dark Knight either certain weaknesses like in some fights like I, I remember e7 you had to like lose like a 90 or something going into like ads or hold it and um that could also be like a strength in some fights like maybe fucked over a 60 mm-hmm. but like you had like different strengths and weaknesses of each job that kind of like made the gap a lot closer that just doesn't exist anymore right everything's in increments of two so. yeah because they just do everything for you now it's just yeah, if you can't conform, like Paladin, for example, can't conform to like a two minute burst, then you're just you're just fucked, right? There's there's no like recovering from that. You can't compete. You're just kind of screwed over. Yeah, there's like um, yeah, like the like okay, all right now okay. Now I'm a warrior simp, but what I'm saying is not simpy. But <laughs> the Paladin buffs and the Warrior buffs, I still don't think there were enough. I really don't. I still think they need a little bit more, but you know, honestly, I feel like at this war at, at at this point, Paladin just needs a fucking rework, which is what they're doing anyway. So that's good. Um, but uh, one thing that you know, one thing that's funny, man, is like there's some people, you know, because because everybody's got this hard on for like RDPS, right? There's mm-hmm. like a couple of people in my chat, right? And they were like, "No, Paladin does more damage than Dark Knight." I'm like, "Yo, <laughs> Dude, does it bro. even do more damage than RDPS?" uh it's like equal it's like it's like it's like equal maybe maybe slightly higher but then i'm like nah nah check the adps tab and then you can <laughs> there's this like massive fucking change right it is because they don't because they don't understand how the dps actually works they don't understand like putting your shit into rate like it's really ironic because square enix made it to where it's ridiculously easy to put everything in raid buffs right because they line everything up with one two minutes but people still don't fucking know they still don't know, even when Square does it for them. They still don't understand how to do it. And I just think that's extremely funny, man. That's just like, holy shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of the thing with, um, you could talk about balancing too. Like a lot of these jobs, um, like for example, Scholar, um, I guess Bard in a sense too, Dancer, a lot of these jobs that have like a pretty heavy emphasis on RDPS. If you don't have the comp that can utilize those buffs, which is, I mean, it's it's a lot harder nowadays because, like, unless you're bringing like some like paladin, um, paladin, you know, paladin, <laughs> you know, yeah. some like, like for example, paladin literally does half the damage under raid buffs as like dark knight does. So like you're just minus half of whatever dark yeah. knight would give you, which is like could be anywhere from like fifty to like eighty DPS, right? So like you bring a job like that inherently you're nerfing literally every other raid buff job in your group in your comp right so it's like certain comps are going to have these like advantages and disadvantages now like i guess uh, i don't know what, what's another melee that doesn't do that much maybe like dragoon reaper i don't know how much they do exactly but i know like ninja monk and samurai do a, a shit ton of the raid buffs right so, like technically bringing one of those jobs is going to nerf your value very slightly when you compare it to the other two jobs right so bringing jobs like that are going to like nerf your party comp, nerf those RDPS jobs very slightly, which are going to have, I guess, in in a way, a effect on the balancing of that job. Mm. Arthas, yep. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. All right, go ahead, Arthas. 
I mean, okay, this is actually difficult. I, I, like this time, I actually try to listen first so I don't repeat points. <laughs> but now, after digesting so many good points, I don't even know where to begin. Ah, okay, uh, okay, red buff, let, let, okay, red buffs first. Here's the problem, right? Because the community value damage based on, I mean, we are given the tool that we can see it. It's not transparent anymore. Maybe it's transparent for the developer, but it's not transparent for us anymore. And because the community can see this formula, this algorithm, this, this, you know, these numbers presented in FF Logs, that is what matters, right? And that comes down to rate buffs at the moment. It comes down to rate buffs. And then it comes down to jobs with good bursts. You know, like some of the some of the good ones you guys mentioned, some of the bad ones you guys mentioned. And then they came out to say Paladin is, I mean, they already acknowledged, right? Paladin is more a sustained job. So they, you know, you know that is so confusing. If you read the job guide, when they justify the 6.21 changes, where they put Paladin and then they put Warrior literally side by side, they were saying, we understand that Paladin is sustained DPS job and therefore doesn't work in burst. So we need to raise his potency. So they understand that this doesn't work. So they want to rework it. Good. And then immediately after that, the next row, they say, we understand that Warrior is a burst job, but it's still not enough. So it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there questioning, right? So you guys know that a sustainable DPS job doesn't work in the current, how we play the game. And then you also got jobs like Warrior and also Reaper, by the way. It's, I, you know, sometimes I categorize Warrior and Reaper kind of the same. Like, we are job that Square any acknowledge that we do good. We sh should do good burst damage. And we do. But then, outside of that, quote unquote, we are just shit. So they acknowledge sustain don't work, burst work, and then for Warrior and uh, 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 Reaper, it's a burst job and it doesn't work. So it's like, do you guys know what you guys are doing? Do you guys have the same information that we have? Are you guys using the same information as we are using? We are, because all these talks that we are talking about, two minutes, red buffs, burst job, we are talking about how we know the game has become. You know, Zap even put up a word doc and show you the graph. Like, we know what the situation of dealing damage and then which interns is used to for you to balance a fight or a, a job, right? We know what is going on. You are the developer. You got all this information. We got all this information. Do you know how to balance your job? That's my primary concern because it doesn't make sense if you tell me in their 6.2 job guide, by the way, if you read the Reaper part, they say Reaper is doing a lot of damage in burst and therefore we're going to buff its 1, 2, 3. So you acknowledge that that job does damage where you're sealing my hit during the 2 minute burst. But you buff the 1, 2, 3 combo, which we don't even press it within the burst window. At all. A, a Reaper don't press 1, 2, 3 at all within the Arcane, Arcane, Arcane Circle, right? So you buff the 1, 2, 3 that we, we rarely use how is that gonna how is that gonna make Reaper any better? Because your strength is the burst. If you don't buff the burst, how can you buff the strength? Warrior. You, you insist that the strength comes to the burst. But if you buff your basic combo, how is that gonna change much? I think Paladin got a bigger buff this time because over the course of all the actions that they listed that they buffed, overall, those are the skills that Paladin pressed throughout in between the two minutes in or out of the burst window. Paladin actually got a better uh, uh a better now. We are less than a week. I don't re I can't re you know, when I go to FF Logs, I can't really see like the whole real uh representation. Like, you know, there's there's still very little number of passes, there's still very little of data that we can compare. But it does seem that like Paladin did get a way more buff than Warrior. When I first saw Warrior and I look at the potency that they put into Path Eye and stuff, I was like, this is exactly the same shit as Reaper. That is not gonna make a difference. So I was asking Zeno. How did you feel? Zeno also felt immediately. Now, Zeno will never feel that Warrior will have enough buff until Warrior is number one, let's be honest, right? So, uh, but but you knew already. Like, we don't even need, I don't even need to play it on first look, on, on just understanding how the game has become the two-minute burst and how damage is calculated. I already knew it was not enough already. So how can Square Enix not see it? And then number two, they talk about this job need needed emergency adjustment. Okay, where is Reaper and where is Machinist? So you're telling me that those two jobs are not emergency enough? I don't even want to begin talking about Ray Majors. And maybe, you know, some people will say even Summoner. Like, what, what, is, like, what is going on? You know what I mean? Now, this is only just, you know, this is just mainly just about job balances. Uh, a burst window, I think it's dog shit. Like, even for me playing a ninja now, uh, compared to before, 
I hate how now I become a two mini job. You know, like I I really hate wh- why it becomes like that. Because how are you going to design fights? How are you going to make it uncomfortable for us? This whole rate here, literally none. We don't, we don't, like at least in Espadillos, at least for Pinex, there is still this, do we burst immediately? Do we burst 230? Do we burst at three? This rate here, literally you just press your two mini. Every melee got uptime. The boss hitbox is big. Every melee got their directional. Melee actually for the first time can play almost at their max potential, except for maybe Proto Kabanko because of the random turning, right? But now you start to see the range being drifted even more. Now you start to see that jobs are being able to do more burst damage exponentially. It just makes some jobs that can't just even stand out more worse than they used to uh, look at before. Like Zeno said earlier, if it, there's no DPS check, who the hell cares, right? But the problem has always been that Machinist has always been really bad. Paladin has always been very, mm, you know, you need to do some big brain shit to even do kind of better, right? But this raid here, in, in, a, in a way, I, I, I was really happy to see that the, the check is so tight. I, I was really happy to see that they overtune it. Right, you know, I know in PR, they say we didn't do it correctly. Oh, this is not considered. No, like just now, Zeno was talking about no, I'm not sure whether Momo said whether it was no. Our common understanding is that this is enough. But they, they, they changed the word to the point that, guys, it's not enough. It is just correcting it back to normal. Dude, that's literally enough. You can't sugarcoat it. It is enough, right? I'm, I'm sorry, Square Enix, right? I mean, good PR, good PR. I think it's good PR. But overall, it's enough. I kind of like that they didn't nerf it. And then we see all these jobs seeing the problem. Because without this, if they just keep on go- doing what they did for Espadillos and, and stuff, we will not see this problem. Everything will just be very like paper on crap, very transparent. We don't see it. But now, <clears throat> finally, for the first time, right? Some of these jobs that we have been talking that is not good enough, and some obviously bad. Finally, now there's like light shine on them and hey, Paladin finally getting a rework. What are they going to rework? Like, I don't even need to, I, I don't even need to come out and hear and say what it should be done. Knowing Square Enix, knowing that if they're going to do it in 6.3, knowing that they're just going to band it over it, they're just probably going to make your bar fit into two minutes. It is what it is. It, it's like how Ninja has became. From this to that, Paladin is most likely going to become this into that. For now, I hope not. At the same time, I hope they don't just balance the job based on we just want you to play around two minutes. I hope not. I hope there's some changes to fight design and or how we do damage. Because right now is for me, right? Right now is really, really, really like it, 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 it has become a little bit boring. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I haven't even covered everything, but I get let you guys. Yeah. So, no, no, no. Yo, I mean that's good. Go ahead, Zeno. You, you know, yeah, yo, you know why Reaper Machinist didn't get buffs? Because Nobody cried about it. See me, I cried about it. Are I yelled sure about that. I don't know. I cried. Machinist. Oh, no, 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 no. See, you got it. No, 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 no. You can't. You can't use a pillow or a or a feather duster to get square. Uh, excuse me, square. Excuse me, hello. No, no, no. You got to use a sledgehammer. You use a sledgehammer. You got to let them know. Uh. <laughs> you got to let them know. You got to yell with with passion. Okay. You gotta, you gotta, literally, you gotta look like this. You want buffs? Dude, look at this. You want buffs? This is what it takes, brother. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. Okay. I actually kind of want to, I guess, talk about something before it gets, like, I guess, too, like, drowned out because Arthur's brought it up, the caster balance right now. There's, like, a really weird situation right now where the melees are doing a little bit more than Black Mage, like, in an ADPS just because they just pump into raid buffs, right? Our DPS wise, they're pretty comparable right now. I think Black Mage is still struggling uh, like a little bit. Like obviously, I think we can all agree that Black Mage probably should be like the overall highest DPS, more. right? Yeah. But the issue is that they can't buff Black Mage because if they do touch Black Mage in any shape or form, that means they also have to buff some of the Red Mage, which obviously they for some reason don't want to do. And we also know that the way Square Enix balances jobs, they look at probably a couple things, two of the big things being the utility they bring and how easy the rotation is, right? Compared to like the ceiling of other jobs. And because Summoner specifically, obviously is like, you know, it's arguably one of the easiest DPS jobs in the game. They're not gonna wanna like touch that with like a fucking six foot pull, right? But they also bring like a shit ton of utility, right? So does, you know, Red Mage, right? Like Summoner has the Phoenix regen, they have the Rekindle, they have uh, double barrier shields on themselves and they have a battle raise right it's the same thing with red mage they have a they have a mitigation aoe 
They have Varese, they have Vercure, which is you know, good in ultimates and stuff like that. Um, and they have, uh, is that it? Varese, Vercure, Magic, Magic Barrier. Barrier. Yeah, yeah magic that's it but it's, yeah that's a, like that's a lot of utility right? i argue less more utility than the fucking physical range dps can bring you know it's like you look at fizz range the bardo they can bring payano oh, they can bring a fucking nature's men that buffs a single target healing on one person every 90 seconds but like the issue is that they can't buff these two jobs i don't think in the current state without either i guess nerfing their placement between black mage or it's making black mage super op but like you know they have to figure out something yeah you know, you know, I, uh, you know, when people uh, because I play a lot of rematch. When people ask me about this rematch situation, I say exactly what Momo told them. They cannot buff. black mage needs more buff. Black mage needs to do more damage, but they cannot buff black mage because summoner is down there. And if summoner is down there, they cannot buff red mage because red mage is supposed to be as good as summoner. And in this six point one job guy, I, I'm sorry. When Yoshi P put out this um apology, he said this one line that makes me super worried. We cannot you, wait. Let me load. Let me let me let me load it up real quick. And, yeah, and, I know and what you're talking him, right? about. I yeah, I got worried about it too. That is the mm -hmm. one thing I'm worried because yep. I mean, okay, obviously for me, if I first look, I look at this, I think about Reaper, I think about um Summoner. So uh, let me go real quick. Okay, um, okay. I'm sorry, man. Let me let me see okay. real quick. Okay, he says something about. They cannot buff the job because the job rotation is too easy and or with the support capability that it comes with. So we have to buff the job based on um based on based on all these things in 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 mind, right? So I was thinking, okay, first thought, summoner. That right there is the reason why summoner is down there, cannot do more damage, right? Super easy rotation, kind of decent utility. But it 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 it, it is the same as red mage. Right? So I was thinking, okay, so what? It's not the player's fault. It's not the player's fault that they designed a the summoner to be this easy. We didn't ask for it. We want a rework. We want a new look. But we didn't ask for it to be this easy. So now this job being doing shitty damage. And then, you know, if, if it just stand alone, I would have been fine. But because it ties to Red Mage, it ties to Black Mage, it ties to the caster role. It's the same for Reaper. Reaper have a lot of freedom in terms of directional. We can choose when we want to do directional, right? The, 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 for me, it's the most flexible melee. But I, I, can't, I can't deny that it is because of that, it's the easiest melee. But you're telling me because of that, you cannot buff this job. They, they don't deserve to be buffed. I think that's bad because this means that some of these jobs, based on their current justification, we will never see them being better. And because some of them don't being better, some jobs that deserve to be better but fall in the same category, they can't. So like Momo say, they need to do something about it. Now, if we actually look at FF locks, if we look at how they categorize damage, you look at all the melees, except Reaper. Reaper is still up there, despite being a chunk behind. But Reaper is still up there, and then Black Mage is between them. If you actually look at it, and then you compare the bottom half, which you got all the physical range, and then the two poor magical range that is like, quote unquote, easy, and a lot of support capability, you actually look at that, right? The, if, if, we, if we don't talk about roles in Final Fantasy XIV, if we just talk about DPS, and support DPS, that chart works. Because you got five melees, you got a black mage up there, they are the pure damage, they do damage, that works. And then you got your support DPS, and then your two support caster down there within sandwich between dancer and bard, it works. But if we somehow talk about bard, they are categorized in rows. Then you start to realize, wait, that doesn't make sense. Why is a caster row have someone up there and then two down there? Why is why is a support role pure DPS and it's down there? Like, it doesn't make sense when the roles comes in. If they take away physical range as a role and they take away caster as a role and they just categorize DPS as DPS and support DPS, I think that would have been fine. But then they also have to do a little bit with uh, party comm and then synergy and then like balance pay. That's, that's not my problem, right? They are the one being paid the big bucks. They go figure it out. I'm just saying on paper, that would have been looked better. But if they want to keep on with this, their current role situation, caster needs to change. Either And, and this makes so much sense way back in the keynote when Yoshi P says, oh, I really feel like, you know, we when we reworked Summoner, we were thinking about removing rest. I was like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Now, two patches later, you're like, yep, this guy knows. He played a caster. Yoshi, like, as much as sometimes we talk shit about Yoshi P, we make fun. 
he's still the developer, he's still a gamer himself. I think he knows. He knows that the job he's playing, Black Mage, cannot be buffed more, especially him maining that job. Because otherwise, people would just be saying, bro, it's just favorism, right? You got a caster that's up there and then two other casters down there. I think he knows. In order for Summoner to be so simplicity, and also him saying in the latest apology, in order for Summoner to be so simplicity, plus the support, it just can't do more damage. That's why I think they wanted to yoink out the rest, and then maybe they can pump Summoner, and then they can pump Ray Mage, and then they can pump Black Mage. I think that's what he wanted. At the same time, I mean, this is a little bit off topic. I do think that Caster do not need any rest anymore. I do think that <laughs> Raid Mage Limited and down, Summoner yeah. should not have rest anymore. If they want to have rest for Caster, they should make it a row action and just give you either one use or maybe three use. I don't know. Balance it throughout the fight that your Caster rest is shared, row, and then you maybe just have one or two charges. And you know what? Or just completely remove it and the only person that can rest is the caster. That can make Savage harder. I know. I get it. But I think it's time for the game to move to that point. But I mean, that is another co uh, topic for another day. For now, right? They need to balance and I think some of these things are the stuff that they can do to maybe help out the caster. Like, I don't even want to talk about Reaper yet. So, yeah. Oh, man, I yes. see a lot of people in oh, sorry, guys, you know? Oh, oh no, you go ahead. I already, I've been talking more anyway. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I see a lot of people like in chat too. I saw a couple of times people saying like difficulty subjective. And like, while that's true, you know what isn't subjective? Effort. The amount of effort a job has to put in to actually maximize its capabilities is not subjective. It is objective. Like no matter how easy or hard you find a job, a job, certain jobs will always require more effort to like maximize their capabilities than other jobs. Which is, I think, what most people talk about when they're when they define a difficulty job, like a difficult job. Oh, that's completely true. Completely See, true. I think one of the two things, and Arthur's brought this up, um, and actually going like just what you said to Momo, is that I'm not so. Er, um, um, earlier, I mentioned that there were a couple things in this like um, letter that I didn't agree with, and one of the things actually that I don't agree with. Is um, so they say when balancing jobs, each job's base damage numbers at the applicable item level are adjusted with respect to the difficulty of playing that particular job and its rotation, as well as its support actions and their effects. So, difficulty of playing a particular job. Okay. So, like you said, that's subjective. Like, that's bias. Like, because some people, some people think that Dark Knight's hard. I think Dark Knight's fucking brain dead. You one, two, three, just hit all your off GCDs. It's the easiest shit in the fucking, like, like how the fuck is a job that easy deal so much damage? Do people really find off GCDs that hard? So me, I think, like, I do not think that a job should be balanced based on how, how difficult or easy it is to play in a game where they're trying to homogenize everything in the fucking first place. It, it would it would it would be a little different. Like let's say, let's say if this was in Heaven's Ward, okay. When <laughs> the actual no 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 this is an it's old good. Boomer Heaven's Ward yeah. shit, okay. But let's say this was back when Heaven's Ward, when rotations were actually like you know rewarding, hitting a positional was rewarding. You know now if you don't hit one, it doesn't fucking matter. Okay, you lose twenty potency. Darn. You know oh well. You know back in the day, you didn't even fucking get to finish your combo. You miss oh, that. Oh, zero, zero bet. Your zero bet in the day, if your three attack didn't hit the rear, it was over. You don't even no, get a bounce stack. Ooh. Yeah, you don't even get the you don't even get the the debuff on the fucking mob. You don't get anything. So like the way that the game is going, I just I there's two reasons why I think it's fucking stupid to balance something based on difficulty. One, I mean, dude, most jobs are fucking easy in this game anyway. But two, uh, you know. Um, like you said earlier, right? We didn't ask for Summoner to be this easy. Like we didn't ask for that. <laughs> like what the fuck? So, so if you're going to, so if you're going to force a design job that like nobody asked for, and on top of that, you're going to balance its damage based on the, the decision that, that, that they made that people don't agree with in the first place, or, you know, some people or whatever. I just, I think that's scuffed. I think that's fucked. Like, I don't think that those should be categories in determining a job's, a job's rotation, a job's, uh, a job's damage. I just, I just don't think it should be, I think what should be, uh, some, some factors are its utility, if it can raise, 
uh, it's mobility shit, shit like that. Like utility shit. Um, you know, like, um, but I don't think that a job's DPS should be based on how difficult it is. And they say that, okay, get this. They say that, but then you have Paladin the way that it is and Dark Knight the way that it is. So, okay, okay, okay. If <laughs> Paladin is way harder to play than Dark Knight, okay? I'm pretty sure we can all agree with that. Any sane person, any sane person can can say to themselves, you know what? I love Dark Knight. I'm a Dark Knight main. I'm up in my, you know, I'm up in my bedroom. My parents are downstairs, but fuck them because, you know, I'm I'm rebellious and I'm I'm blasting my Avril Lavigne. You know, I get that. But even that person, come on. Your job's fucking easy, man. So why the fuck is Dark Knight dealing so much damage and Paladin dealing so little damage if the difficulty of playing a job is a factor? So like they say that but then they don't even go by it. So just completely throw out that, that, um, uh, that category of how you balance shit. It just doesn't make any sense. At least to me anyway, I just don't get yeah. it. No, no, that's true. That, that's what I'm really scared about. Just not what I say. When we, when we players feel this way and they feel that way, but when it doesn't represent it the way they say, and we were here, like we knew that's exactly going to happen. That's the worrying part, you know? That's the that's the that's a really scary part. Um, and I, another, I mean, we, I mean, another thing, I, 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 I want to give them a little bit of slack here is that because of the number crunch, maybe because of this new formula, this new algorithm they are working with, maybe they haven't find the balance yet, which is why they wanted two more weeks every patch now, specifically to say to balance stuff. Initially, I was like thinking, yeah, you guys just need more time to develop stuff, you know, another nice PR stunt. But now after this, I'm like, yeah. They need that two weeks. And and I hope they really make good use of that two weeks to 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 really uh balance stuff. If you you see this thing about to come back, right? This thing about the door boss, I mean, this door boss is what spur spark all this whole conversation. If you cannot balance your job, which is fine, there are 19 jobs, and your philosophy is a little bit weird based on what Zeno say regarding, you know. You balance your job based on utility slash difficulty of the job. And difficulty, like Momo say, is depend on individual. And maybe the developer look at it not the same way we do, right? But if you're gonna, if you're if you find it hard to unbalance your job, totally understandable. Make sure that at least your fight is balanced so that all the jobs can do it. Now, of course, it will still be unbalanced. For example, DSR. Why bring a Reaper? DSR. Why, why did you bring a Reaper and not play, bring a ninja? But does this mean that Reaper cannot clear this, uh, this or no? Reaper is actually like the perfect example that the job is bottom in terms of melee, but at least that job can do any, every phase. A little bit more effort, yes, requires your group to do a little bit more, yes, but it is achievable, it's playable, and it still feel good like, okay, this job is a little bit low, but we can make it work. And it works. But this one, this P8S, Unless you are the best of the best of the best Reaper and you got the best of the best of the best supporting cast and members in your group. Normally, if you go into park, you play in the casual group, you play in the mid-core group, that they could also done week one up to this point. Suddenly, they just can't. Then you balance your fight wrongly based on the unbalance of your job. So if you can't, um, I don't expect you to just snap your finger and get it done. Yoshi P also said, uh, they can't do it within the two weeks. They need more than that. And hence, Paladin rework is a future thingy. But for now, emergency job, the emergency band-aid. I understand that. That's totally fine. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to deny them that. I'm not going to shit talk on them on that. But please, in the future, if you can't unbalance your job, balance the fight based on your unbalanced job. I know that sounds like double fuck up, but that's what this game needs to do right now. Well, it would have been better. You know? Yeah, like it would like like if they would have released with the with the nerf, then n like probably none of this outrage would have happened because you would have had warriors, reapers, machinists, all of them cleared like just as much as the other jobs. It just would have been closer. It wouldn't have been like holy fuck, I gotta swap off this job because this fucking game's balance is dog shit. You know, it wouldn't be like that. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to to ask this as a question to. And so there is this discussion on what is a proper DPS check for the last fight of a, a savage. 
uh, fight week one. I mean, what, what should we expect from a week one fight? Uh, for our player base. And I understand that, like, some... We saw the discrepancy here. The balance was off. But if the balance was on, right, and the balance was good with all the other jobs, uh, at, and they were all doing the damage the top groups would do right now, is it a good DPS check? Or do we still need to lower it down a little bit for uh, everyone else? Because I want to well. start first. I want to sure. start first on this one. Shiva. Shiva is the best DPS check they could do for Savage. Why? I think so, because yeah. It is perfectly tuned for crafted gear. And if you are not good enough, maybe your group or your strat or your comp, you have the option to go get ruby weapon and then get a 375 accessory and bell existed during the time. You can get a 375 bell or an accessory plus the ruby weapon. It will make it so easy. Momo's group is the... Momo's group... Actually, it's funny enough. My group, Momo's group and Zeno's group during Shiva is the pure example of why it was the best. My group... JP group and JP DPS sucked. My group have to get Ruby weapon. Zeno's group didn't need Ruby weapon. Momo's group can clear it with death even without Ruby weapon. Because Momo's group is that good in terms of optimization. They done speed run. They were very optimized. They got really good players. They were able to do it. I was very fucking impressed. They would like, violent destruction was like, what DPS shit? I was like, holy fuck, this group is good. Hey, they didn't even need primal weapon. It's true. What DPS check? And then you look at move. They play really well and then they don't have problems. They didn't need Ruby weapon. And then I'm here sitting like, bro, we needed to get Ruby weapon and kept Tomes to get accessory. So I'm seeing three completely different situations. An ideal, a worse, and the best case situation. But all these three situations tells you one thing. There is an option for you to go get that additional if you need. This P8S door boss at least for hardcore proc, I don't want to say wolfers. At least for hardcore proc, you know, one notch before the uh, before the wolfers group. Literally, if you don't have the seven primal weapons, a tome weapon. Now I know the wolfers say they didn't go for a week two cap. Whatever, fuck it, whatever. Okay, they are they are just a one off. But that's why I don't want to bring in the wolfers in. I just want to say the hardcore hardcore group. All hardcore group, we need seven primal weapons. We need the tome weapon. We use all the turn one, two, three gear, and then we all buy at least two pieces, one accessory or one board, uh, uh, one uh, head, feet, um, hand piece or one body piece in order for us to do it, just able to do it. I was watching Momo's Pro, even Momo's group, it's, it, it is so tight even for their group's caliber. That is how I knew if their group can't do it, every 90 other percent of any mid core group that used to just week one easily, right? Oh, we only raid four hours a day. We wait, we raid six days a week. We still get we went. Those groups are never gonna get it. We and they did a full death on one of our pulls and still cleared. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, at the end, yeah. Uh, so it's like that's that. I think, but like, like if Yoshi P come out to say, "Hey, we balance." It, I mean, in a way, they did say that, although they put it in a very PR way in this, you know, in the patch note and then this apology. If they actually come out to just say, right, hey guys, we tune it based on week two gear, this is perfect. They tune it perfectly because you needed all this and the best players. And then, you know, you can, then you can afford maybe a damage down with the death that you clear. I think that's perfect. But if you come out to say that you balance this based on crafted, that's completely horseshit. There is no way. Yeah, no, you know they what, definitely Momo? tuned it up. You know what, Momo, now that I'm here, I've got a proposition for you. If you guys do have time, right, can you guys do me a favor? Go get crafted gear, but only use the turn one, turn two, turn three, week one gear that you can get from turn one, two, three. I want to see you guys attempt it. Just like if you are attempted in, in, in Shiva, I want to see how far behind you are, guys. Are. Well, oh, okay. but now so, it's nerfed already, right? Well, this is actually Weird. something we talked about week one. We actually thought about doing the same thing. Um, but the the thing is, it's like you don't really need to do that since you have like the analytics on FF Logs to kind of tell you what it was, right? Um, no, it was doing result. it in crafted. If doing it in crafted, you you could do it in all crafted. Um, granted, your comp had to be like the meta comp, but if you ran like if you ran all crafted, no ex weapon, no tome, no tome anything, you would run into DPS check issues with a, like a warrior paladin, machinist reaper, white mage sage comp, right? Like the probably the most un like inefficient comp you could bring for for damage. Um, however, the meta comp could clear in all crafted. Uh, but the okay. I think the the big thing too is like you're, you're this is gonna be like kind of controversial, but it's actually kind of funny because I, I guess I should 
I want to bring it up, but like when they, when, I remember watching the live letter when they told, like when they said they're going to remove 90s and threes and stuff like that, it was like transitioning to two minutes. I was like sitting there, I'm like, there's literally never going to be a hard DPS check in this game again. And I, I yeah. honestly still stand by it because the thing is, if this fight was tuned properly, right, as, as they said, it wouldn't have been hard. And the reason why, I, well, the reason why I don't think it's quote unquote hard is the fact that half of the like difficulty when it came to previous fights like Eden's Promise, um, Shiva, was the fact that the groups who struggled with the DPS check a lot didn't know how to like properly sync their buffs up, right? They either lost the 90 or they didn't sync 90s up with like final like two minute bursts and they didn't sync twos with threes or twos with 90. Like there's like a bunch of factors that went into like DPS optimization, but now literally everything is just, hey, press your shit on cooldown and you basically fucking win. Like sure, there's micro optimizations here and there. It'll grant you like a very small amount of like potency depending on the job. But for the most part, it's like literally just press your shit on cooldown and you win, right? These three tier um, especially. These three mm -hmm. tier especially. Yeah, yeah, like the final, the final, like P8 part one, right? Let's talk about that because that's a pretty good example of literally just, it's just one of those fights where you just press your shit on cooldown, right? And everything just kind of naturally lines up. Whereas like the fact that, that was, it was such a like excruciating DPS check and the fact that like, re like optimizing your rotation didn't really take too much brain power as it used to was fucking insane, right? Because I made that comparison too in the post that I, that I wrote on Twitter about like the, the DPS check is like, when you look at something like Eden's Promise, right? Where you had literally a two minute burst during fucking Shiva icicles and a two minute burst during lines if you did it on cooldown. Like gr you, you had groups literally opting to losing a use a full usage of twos just because they didn't want to burst during Shiva and lines, right? Which isn't like a bad call because obviously it depends on your group. If you know you can afford the DPS loss of losing a two, then, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever. But like, you didn't really have that situation in this tier, right? It's, you know, like your, 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 your worst enemy was literally just getting uh, beast mode first and having your yeah. shit like just fucked for like a couple seconds. And you like, it wasn't like super hard to figure out an issue because either you just buffed early every pull and that would solve it or you just greeted it and stayed inside like a GC longer. But it's like, yeah, like that, that kind of stuff is like, that was what made DPS checks in the past pretty hard. Now that doesn't exist, and if job balance was truly as good as it was in Shadowbringers 2, the Shadowbringers balance was really good, right? Like, there was very mm -hmm. minute differences between all the jobs. Like, sure, you had, like, maybe some issues with Warrior, maybe some issues with Darknet uh, sometimes, and maybe some issues with Machinist, but for the most part, all the jobs were fairly well within, like, a couple of percent of each other. And if you had that balance in this tier, and this tier was, like, I guess the HP was balanced properly, you probably wouldn't see those issues and the fight would like fall over on any clean run. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, I actually thought the DPS check on eight or the, yeah, the door boss, it was fine actually. Mm. But the, but the problem was it wasn't fine for every job. Like I actually real, like it was, it was very satisfying killing that fucking door. boss. <laughs> but, um, I thought it was fine. Like it was, it just, it was a bummer that it wasn't good for like every job. So let's say that like all the tanks were properly balanced and they, you know, and they were within, you know, 1%, 2% of each other, you could have cleared with any, with any comp, but that wasn't the case. Like sometimes you had like a seven, seven, eight percent discrepancy in like ADPS and shit. And that was like basically if if all of the jobs would have been as good as the as the like the like the best ones um or even just a little bit worse I, it, they don't even have to be like like identical they can just be like a little bit worse that would have still been fine so i thought i thought the dps check this tier was i mean it was tight it was hard but uh like it was fine like it wasn't it wasn't harder than you know, like, I mean, you mentioned like, you know, Shiva or whatever. The only difference was back in Shiva, you could bring, you could bring a fucking warrior, you know, and shit, <laughs> you know, you could bring a, well, you know, I'd say you could bring a reaper, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that, there's, cause it's the same thing though. It's like, it's like the, 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 the really bad thing about balance now is that like, what's the difference between a fucking ninja and a fucking monk and a fucking samurai, right? There literally isn't anything outside the utility. The rotations like back in the day, like for example, like let's say Bard, right? I think a good example is Bard and Dancer, right? Bard excelled at like their 80 slash 90 slash three minute buff windows and Dancer was like a two minute buff job, right? So like depending on the fight, you know, maybe one fight lined up better for the other, right? 
But it, like nowadays, that not, none of that exists for any job, right? Like maybe I saw Paladin, of course, but like any job that's like a two minute burst, literally, if a job is good for them, it's good for like everybody else in their category. So it's mm -hmm. like that's a big issue in itself. And I don't really know how they're going to solve that because either they have to yeah. either revert it or double down on their new philosophy and I guess cater fights to every single job in the game. So I Should guess... I didn't... I did Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to follow up with another question. If you have a point there, you go ahead. So, you know, I, 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 I love this DPS check because never once in my life since Gaudius, right? I actually feel like you know, you know, like just as you know, say how the job has become now. Oh, I miss a direction of who cares, right? This P3, uh, this P8S door boss actually for the first time make me think about. I am that I play ninja and I never really like bother like ah, I mean I you know I overcap five ninki. I'm you know I'm not supposed to use an armor crush here, but I'm on the flank. I'm lazy. I couldn't get to the back. Ah, fuck it, you know I do an armor crush. I lose a little potency, whatever. This time, this P8S door boss. Actually makes me feel like whenever I miss a positional, whenever I overcap five Ninki, I'm like, oh, we are fucked. We are not meeting this, and it's gonna be my fault. Like for the first time, I actually feel stressed, which is good. I love it because, like Zeno said, when you kill it, it's just like, yes, you know, it feels so good. I love the balance for what it is. For you know, okay, if we okay, if if they didn't come out to say we balance it for uh crafted gear, if, if they just you know keep their mouth shut and they release it as it is, I wouldn't be like, this is awesome. But I do feel really bad that some job just can't, no matter how well they play, sometimes just a little bit of external factors, maybe they are you know, additional non-meta comm member, or maybe some of them just not as good or anything, but they are still, has always been week one, day one, day three, day four, clearable group. Now they just suddenly distant to the point that they can't do it. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me like an Asian parent. You, you, you know, when you get an A, right, you do your job well, right? You oh, you press every GCD perfectly. You go back home and say, hey, daddy, I got an A. Your dad will be like, okay, you did good. You know, you get to kill the boss barely, but you know what? Good job. Well done, Jimmy. Yeah, you can go get your dinner, right? And then you got another Jimmy from another household. It's like, dad, I played this job, but I tried really good. I get a B plus. Still, B plus is pretty good. But B plus is not good enough in this door boss. B plus is like, wow, Jimmy, why did you only get a B plus? How come you didn't score five more points? You should have played another job so that you can be A and then you can clear the fight. No, I've seen so many streamers, so many friends, even like Z. Z I'm, I'm not sure whether Zeno was Mimi or he was serious, but at least for my group, Zeph was very shaken the, for the fact that he can't play. I mean, not say can't. It is a better decision for him to get our Paladin, play Gunbreaker. And I asked him the very next pool, dude, so, you know, this is your first Gunbreaker pool. Obviously, you don't know what the fuck you were pressing. Obviously, you miss a few things. I also asked Zeno the same, right? Yo, Zeno, now that you play Gunbreaker versus your Warrior, that I've seen your rotation being perfect already. Now that you come in Gunbreaker, you fuck up a little bit. How is the difference? Zev told me, well, I just did about four, 500 DPS difference that my Paladin, that was perfect already. He went to the logs, he checked with other limited amount of paladin that play he was like doing more damage than the best paladin at that point by 70. now he switched to gunbreaker pressing 30 75 potency and his do, uh, uh, efficiency and he's doing 500 more damage xeno fucking flip his shit out when he cleared it on his gunbreaker with damage downs so i was like you know i don't feel i i feel the dps check is good but i feel really bad for these players you know savage is supposed to be the one content that you know until this point, we can play whatever. Hell, I even wanted to play Reaper. God bless, I didn't play Reaper. I would have been griefing so hard. Yeah, you know? grief, but dude. I feel bad. There's so many good Reapers out there, so many good machines out there. They press perfectly. They got an A, but they go home and it was not good enough. I, and then those group, like either they have to settle for week two or they have to go extra mile until this point that Yoshi P nerf it and they feel deflated or they just completely dissolve the group, left the group, disband the group. Like, the be I, I love the check, but I just feel like there's too much more negative than that single, that single positive that I feel, you know? So yeah, so I had, I had a, um, so okay, so before I made the change to Gunbreaker, um, I checked my, my logs on Warrior versus like other people that it not only, well, that had cleared. Um, my damage was within the top, like, uh, five. My damage was around, like, 51.5, like, 
the highest was 52.10, I think. So, so I was up there. So basically at that point, it's just crit variance more or less. Um, and there were, there were people that actually had lower than me, uh, like quite a bit lower than me that had also cleared. When I swapped a gunbreaker, I gained like 400 like plus damage. It was insane. And the, and, and when we cleared, we had a death at the end. I'm pretty sure we had a death at the end and we had two damage downs. Like what the fuck? Like, like that, like that check, if that, that, that check would have been like, the check was fine. The DPS check was fine as they released it. It's just the jobs were fucked, man. The job balance was just fucked. Okay. I mean, I didn't like, you know, I mean, I mean, mm-hmm. look, I mean, warrior is still, you know, I mean, it's still the best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> to, to me. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> but, it's but I have learned. Okay. I have learned about freedom and liberty. Okay. And how to fire a gun. And I've learned, I've learned a new life lesson. And that is live by the gun, die by the gun. And now I'm a gunbreaker main. Maybe one day I'll go back. But now it's freedom, baby. We're freedom mode now. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, so, Momoga, I, I was just going to follow up because I, I am curious about what you guys believe balance should look like in this game. And I'm not just saying, oh, everyone does the same DPS. Everyone's, everyone can play whatever they want and it's equal and even completely everything. But how do we achieve stuff like that while making the game still fun? Like what? What, uh, what does balance uh, look like in this game? Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna talk about Reaper. Um, it's really <laughs> talk funny about because... Reaper. Go ahead. No, yeah. no, no. I'm gonna bring up a serious point. Yeah. A job would actually be balanced right now if it had the resources to generate um, gauge. gauge during yeah. downtime. Because that way, if if it could generate gauge during downtime, it would probably be the best melee in any fight with any sort of downtime. Because at that point, you're Assuming they made it to where you could get like an extra in shroud uh, window every every time like you get a full usage of like some like like the say they give like a 15 second 15 second buff like meditate you have to stand still for 15 seconds and you generate 10 seconds every three seconds or 10 gauge every three seconds right and you get a full in shroud if you can sit still for like that 15 seconds of downtime right at that point you look at a fight like DSR boom you're like mm. you're like getting an, in, an extra in shroud window every single time there's downtime right um and you look at high concept you're getting an extra in shroud in those two fights and that's really big too because reaper is a very pool heavy job and that's always been like its strength right it's out of all the melees it's probably the, the strongest when it comes to pooling its resources because of the way how, because of how long it takes to build up a whole in shroud gauge right it takes you takes you like almost a full minute to build one just one in shroud gauge um so it, it had the capabilities to actually get like an extra resource or extra usage of that like you know 3,000, like uh, 3,000 potency window, then boom, you know, that's, that's, that'd be like a huge, huge niche for it. And it would be good in a lot of fights, but the issue is that it can't do that. So in fights where there is downtime, not only is it the worst already, but now it's just significantly worse than every other job because Reaper gets fucked the most when it comes to, when it comes to downtime. You know, everybody always tells me, right? P- Dragon Song Ultimate P7 Reaper is awesome. Yes, I know. That is only if you get 100, 100 all the way. You, there are yeah. groups that struggle to kill dragon. You can't get 100, 100. You need to unleash something to help your group to kill the double dragon still. Now, if you do get the 100, 100, please don't forget. You, uh, you, in order for you to get the 100, 100, that means that you have been pooling a lot of resources in the previous phases to achieve that, which then means that 1 plus 1 minus 1 is still 1. Yes, you do a lot in P7, but over the course up to that point, you're already losing so much, you know? Hey, and also Momo, Mo, Mo, actually it's very simple for them to uh, give the gauge. So, Sal, that five second cast, just generate gauge. Yeah. 10 per yeah, one second, you, done. Let's give you gauge, yeah. Yeah. It's funny too, because yeah, that's one of the things that it's like, yeah, when, when people talk about P7, it's like, I mean, first of all, Reaper doesn't even do that much more than any other melee's of P7. It does more. But it doesn't do that much more to where it makes even like a, a hint of difference if you're really good at the game. Um, but it's also, yeah, like you said, like the thing about like holding your resources that like if you want to hold your resources in a specific phase, that means you are losing damage in another phase. In exactly. that case being P6, which is, you know, one of those phases where 
sure it's not the hardest dps check but you know i've i've seen groups clean and rage with like bad patterns like downtime patterns before so it's like you know it, i was there i saw that yeah <laughs> there is like a hint of uh hint of something there okay so, Actually, it's really funny, real quick, uh, that we haven't talked anything about the healers. This <laughs> is just like been ooh. completely dead silent yeah. about healers. Yo, well, that's your well, job. Yeah, that's your job. Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I don't know anything <laughs> about about healer balances right now. Actually, you're gonna need to like make like a timestamp in the video of like when the healer talk starts because like we've been talking like for like an hour and there hasn't been like a single dust of just healer talk. I am too lazy. I need an editor to come and do that shit for me, man. <laughs> it takes so much I mean, time. The healer balance is fairly decent, right? Now, it, I, I guess I should have brought this up before too when we were talking about like difficulty versus effort. Mm -hmm. And like when you talk about difficulty versus effort, it's like when you look at something like Astrologian, right? Like obviously, Astrologian I think should be like the highest DPS healer, but it's not. Scholar is. And I think that's just because when SE looks at Scholar, they're like, hey, you know, Scholar has a, a utility tool that, you know, if they use it, that means they lose damage, which is their Aether Flow. You know, every time you use an Aether Flow heal, you lose. Uh, 100 potency right so they look at that and they're like okay well we can't really make scholar any lower because if we do then it's just like unbalanced because you know now there's going to be even lower with like a, i guess a mid-tier bottom end healer which is something they have to balance around right they can't bounce around just one spectrum of like i guess players right they have to bounce around the high and the low end um so like that's that's an issue and that's, that's an issue for like a lot of jobs too but especially for the healers um and then you look at like uh, it's kind of funny that like a lot of people aren't really talking about scholar versus sage and maybe it's just because in prog it's not really as evident because obviously you're not going to be able to probably maximize your your uh, like capabilities as a scholar in the first couple of weeks but like as the tier goes on and as you know people get more experienced and more comfortable with fights scholar just starts gapping sage and we're not talking like a small gap you look back at like the like the old fights you're talking anywhere from like a 9 to 10% gap which is probably the biggest out of like in terms of like percentage wise that's probably one of the like bigger gaps out of all the jobs i think even right now dancer machines is only like five six percent and that's like the big thing is like when pe people don't really realize it and this was like kind of like an issue at the start of the expansion too i'm, I'm sure you guys are aware of this when people are like oh it's not that bad it's only like a couple hundred dps but that couple hundred dps is amplified when you're doing no fucking damage in the first place right like i remember back in uh start of start of a uh, endwalker people were comparing like paladin to dark knight like oh it's only like 500 500 dps 600 dps almost a thousand dps that's nothing but that was just because people were used to like Eden's promise numbers when they were doing like mm -hmm. 15 14k and the thousand dps back then sure that wasn't that much compared to now but like yeah 400 like, that's, dps that's is a lot when the max yeah. dps you're doing is like five five thousand five two something like yeah. that like 400 dps is a shit ton so that kind of issue just starts, I guess, popping up. And why Mage and Astro? They're more or less balanced, but they, I don't know what they're doing with Scholar and Sage. Like, the thing is, too, it's like when we were talking about, like, which healer do we bring for Prog? It's like, well, Scholar already does so much damage. It's already gapping Sage by this much, and our comp is pretty good, right? Like, because, I mean, that's the thing, too. Scholar may either get buffed or nerfed, depending on your party comp, because some jobs are just better at utilizing raid buffs more than others. And our comp is pretty good at utilizing raid buffs. So it was like... Man, even if I have to heal, even if I have to like use Aetherflow healing, I'm probably still going to do a lot more healing or damage than my Sage. And that's just me playing safer. So like when, when, it's, when, when the conversation starts to lean towards that and not like, hey, at least like for example, White Mage, right? White Mage, it's like, oh yeah, White Mage is generally going to do more damage in Astro than Prod because, you know, Astro takes way more brain power, way more effort to optimize. And you're either going to see, you're either going to be below White Mage or just neck and neck with one right so like hey you know boom you know white mage that's that's good for damage or like scholar the conversation should be hey if i even have to do like a speck of healing then maybe sage should be a little bit higher than scholar and scholar should be a little bit higher than sage depending on if the scholar has to heal at all and that's just not how it is right now you know it's funny i really haven't heard too much talk about healers at all in the in the Twitterverse and the different because nobody of... fucking plays them anymore, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah. waiting for like two hours for two Ooh. healers. It was fucking awful, man. See, this uh, this has nothing to do with balance, but I want to ask Momo regarding this uh, for healer as well. How do you like healing as a healer that likes to heal? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like, are you a healer that loves to heal? You know, this is the part where I want to ask, right? That's as like a what healer, dream. right? 
as a healer, right? Does this red tier make you feel more like a healer? Um, they did a really good job this year with healing. I'll, at least in terms of like mid eye level prog, they did a really good job. I think. Uh, pretty much every fight has an AOE that'll one shot you for a max HP with no mitigation. Um, there some fights have like HPS checks to an extent. Like I think Seven has a couple periods where it can be. Uh, pretty hard to heal, especially if you do purgation the you know the normal way, not like the cheese way of the sleep with cat. Or... Come on, bro, that's the intended method. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then like the final fight, the P8 part two, that that's really good for healing. That's you know it was like almost akin to Eden's promise. I thought that was really nice. There was also like a lot of the, one of the biggest like kind of nerfs I want to say to healing, not necessarily like a nerf, but like. It was like kind of like a ghost nerf where it was like the boss's hitboxes are so big that if one person's standing on one side and another person's standing on the other, you're not going to reach them with your heals. So like you have mm -hmm. to either have them move into the boss a little bit. Like I guess a good example would be the um the tumult spam during the uh, door boss, right? Where it's like doing like the little mountain AOEs coming out from under you. Mm -hmm. uh, your heals won't reach the other side if you're no. standing around like in a circle. So like... That was kind of interesting and like it was the same issue with high concept too where it's like people were so spread out that they were missing either shields or mitigation and that's really something we haven't really seen before like sure it happened a couple times in the past but it was like really prevalent this tier i feel do you feel like this makes healer feels more and should heal more or try to play better around healing and because this this shift of Hey, I can just do this, 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 and I'm a healer in Final Fantasy 40. But this right here, with all the things that you mentioned, right? Bigger hitboxes, bigger mm -hmm. arena, mechanics that involve you to go corner to corner. You might miss someone, but you can still handle it if you, you know, lean towards, like basically play better as a healer. Do you think mm -hmm. because of this one more step that healer needs to be better? They're also including, you know, dealing with TB, with bleed, dealing with AoE, with bleed. Because let, let me tell you this, this is the most prominent one. Most healer in pf that i've seen right the moment any aoe goes off they just hey aoe goes off i use my off gcd heal yay done oh everybody hp is full done and then they just totally forget that the bleed is still taking and then the tank died to auto and all the party member just die do you think this one step that requiring you to be a, a more healer than a healer than before do you think is what makes more healer quit healing and therefore like dude the healing the healing situation in PF right now is really, really bad. It's fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's it's hard. It's 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 I, honestly it the like, Eden's promise was like the last hard healing fight we had, right? Like that was it was almost the same situation where people were like waiting like hours to get in, or people just like blast blacklisting so many so many players that they couldn't find a healer because they blacklisted all of them, right? Because they just kept you know they yeah, were just wiped so the healing issues, toxic, right? Dude. I mean, I just remember it happening. I didn't do it because I didn't heal in party finder because fuck that. But I'm just saying like. Um, there, there were like pretty big issues with Eden's promise, but this tier is like, it's for like, you're really good healer. You're probably not going to like notice too much of a difference between tiers because like, you're probably already excelled at like managing your, your, your like tools and like kind of like mapping out like a timeline in your head or just like realizing like, like windows and periods of time where there's downtime and between, between damage. But like every fight this tier is like. AoE into like AoE into AoE into AoE like really fast paced right like sure there's like a couple periods of downtime but like there's a lot of periods where it's just like back to back like AoE spam in the sense of like mechanics right like I guess a good example would be P6 where you have the stack at the start and then right after that's the limit cut when then right after that is the ethereal exchange one with like the donut and defamation AoEs so like to like natural really alignment healer, as well right yeah, well, that's well, that's P, that's P eight part two. I was talking about P six. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, P eight part two. I mean, that's that's just a hard healing fight in general. I think there's just like a lot of healing that you're kind of forced to do. I think I did like thirty something suckers in my first clear or something, which is pretty <laughs> abnormal. Because I mean, it's like I remember the P eight or P four part two. It was really funny. I did like six suckers in like the first six minutes of the fight, and like the other like twenty suckers or fifteen suckers I did were like literally the last two minutes for the enrage spam. Whereas like at least P eight part two is more evenly balanced like throughout the whole thing. Which is really nice. Um, yeah, it's just—I mean, it's—it's it's just a—it's just a really—it's a well-tuned healing tier. I think it's. I'm, 
I, I was just going to ask a question about just how healing should be in this game, too. I mean, in the previous tiers, would you say that if you had one good healer and one healer kind of just doing something every once in a while, it was okay? But in this tier, you need both healers working together to actually uh, clear a fight? Uh, I mean, that's like a skill level thing. I think a really good healer can solo heal a fight for the most Even part. Even in this tier? Yeah. Yeah, someone did already. My okay. my JP Static uh leader stream team they did a sage uh PLS solo healer heal. Yeah. They they did it. I was like, hmm, hmm. I don't think they can ever make a fight that's unsolo healable. It's just yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just. I mean, it, it it it's more like you could carry a group by yourself, but it's going to be more effort than previous tiers, right? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are actually worried about like. Because, you know, like, all the new tank cooldowns, all the new healing cooldowns, like, people were like, oh, man, they're not going to be able to make a fight or make fights that can utilize this, like, properly. And then you, like, look at these fights, it's like, damn, dude, I wish, I wish I had, like, Aqua Veil. Oh, I wish I had uh, Exaltation for all these busters, because, I mean, those bleeds, I mean, they did a really good job yeah. with the, the tank yeah. busters this year. Like, this is, honestly, as a healer, it's what a tank buster should be every single, like, fight, almost, right? Because it basically makes it where you can't choose it then Vuln, and... You're still taking damage periodically after uh, the buster on top of like the auto attacks, right? So there's like a lot of tank damage this year, and I'm sure like if you guys have tanked in Party Finder, you've probably died at least Oof. a couple times to the healers auto just not healing you, <laughs> or or auto attacks. Yeah, P seven's rough, man. Dude, P7, there's this point, yeah. dude. There's this point where you get Double it's P. like a it's like the it's like the tank buster. It's like right after you stack north. There's a tank buster. To put that that does damage plus puts that wind bleed and then there's an AOE that mm -hmm. puts another bleed on you and then he autos dude that's a lot of damage man yeah the two minute window yeah I always when you're like when you're first optimizing it was like dude how the how the like how the fuck are we gonna heal this right like it's so much damage on the tanks because the thing too it's like you can cheese it kind of if it's condensed because that's just a solo stack you can you can kind of manipulate a little bit but if it's dispersed there's nothing you can do about that you just both tanks are taking the bleed whether you like it or not. Okay. You know, that's another reason why Warrior kind of sucks this tier, actually. All of Warrior's strengths, uh, they don't exist this tier. It's like the bleed damage is based on the percentage of mitigation, right? So, like, you're actually going to mitigate, like, more if you just front load your mitt versus healing it up with, like, Blood Wedding. Also, Home Game kind of sucks this tier because you don't really get you don't really get any extra usages, and it's just, like, objectively the worst um, because, well... Okay, so I guess it's mo it's like mostly or um, mostly because you don't you don't get more usages, but you like take damage still, right? So in that case, like Living Dead, uh, you heal yourself with each GCD, and I mean you can kind of do that with Warrior, but um, well, no, I guess that's wrong. I guess I guess Hollow Ground is still the worst because it's on Paladin. So never mind. I guess Hollow Ground is still the worst, <laughs> um, and the probably the best is Bolide. Because it's because it just zeroes out everything, so I yeah I'd like do gunbreakers were really good this tier man holy shit my favorite my favorite tank is only uses an invuln right at the start of the cast and not pop any mitigation to at least mitigate the bleed and then they just <laughs> like, as soon as it falls off they just die because they're taking like thirty forty k per tick and, and dot is on top yep. of it. <laughs> oh. Man, I love chat this show. They are fucking memeing. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's so bad this tier too because like it, it it goes to show because like. The, the tank busters are like they hit so hard that even the uh, cure from FF logs had to make like a, a thing to where it's like, hey, you know, stop blaming you healers. You didn't pop enough fucking mitigation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Check yeah, yourself yeah, yeah, before yo. you check others, you know? <laughs> but he actually made like a, like a table that shows you how much mitt you pressed for each buster. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's toxic. I didn't know Holy. that. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, you just supplemented it. Oh, man. I don't know if I want to stream rating this tier, dude. <laughs> just... No, you got to, man. It's fun. 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 It's Yeah, I love this tier. This tier is fun. All these oh. new things, especially the, dude, the, 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 the one that stands out is definitely the, the bleed. The, the, the bleed. Mm. I, uh, the other day, I'm, I don't want to name names here, right? My best experience, right? The other day, right? Rating on Primal uh, Data Center, right? There was this healer. His core healer died to damage. Oh, right? here we go. So then a raid. A raid. What happened? Okay. And then he topped off everybody to full already. But the tank was taking a TB, bleeding, 
And then the AOE, but the whole party list is filled already. Cole, Cole Healer died, okay? So he was the only one mage left. He was pressing 10 glare. The, the tank literally went from full HP, take auto and bleed and die. And then the tank asked him, where are my heals? The healer said, I have a whole party to take care of and my co healer is dead. And then when I look at the VOD, when he has swift cast, he didn't swift cast rest the co healer, he swift cast the glare. And he let the tank die. And he, everybody was full health. And he said, I have to keep the whole party alive and my co healer is dead. I can't do anything. It blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, he probably didn't realize what happened, dude. He's probably panicking at him buttons and he's like, Man, I'm I'm doing my best, right? You know? He probably thought he did everything right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess if we talk about Yoshida's statements a little bit, like we we've been talking about job balance and things and it, you mm -hmm. know, gone into a couple of different directions here. Uh do you think if he would have just the notes would have said, Hey, Paladin DPS a little low. We're just going to buff it real quick. We're going to fix it later. Uh, yeah, we the damage was 1-2% too high. We should have put it lower. Sorry, guys. And just been done. That There wouldn't be all this crazy conversation about all the extra details he gave us about how they will go in balance and everything else. Um, because I think the community went a little bit crazy with yes. the get good memes and uh, everything else, right? Because of the, he added that extra layer of detail. That that that's the meme, right? That's the thing, right? I don't really think any real. I mean, I mean, I mean. Obviously, there are probably some idiots that really think that way, but I don't really think majority of us or, or majority of you know the influencers, the content creators, the people on Twitter. Uh, the streamers, when they say something like, yo, this is just the developer telling you to get good. I don't think we really mean that. I think it's a meme, right? Like, if, like even in his patch note, um, I mean, even if his apology opening, right, he says something like, you know, the players are better, you know, we just have more time to prep. And obviously, I mean, all of us here is the same, right? Like Momo also said earlier, right, you know, at the beginning, he had to press so much healing. But after one or two weeks, he realized that, wait a second, I can uh, do so much more. Like, you know, just when he was talk talking about Scholar, right? At the beginning, how do I do this? I fuck it, I just do it for the sake of progging. But one or two weeks later, hey, I can do so much more. Now my gap between me and the other job start to widen, right? The gap happened, right? So that's what the developer is talking about, right? They have more than just three days of prog. They have more than just one or two days of race time to get it right. They have like maybe possibly weeks or months to do it. So obviously they play better at that point. They are they, they, they are obviously just given that much, much amount of time. They just got better and they make the fight. Seems more trivial and therefore they add in the percentage to make it harder for us, right? That has not, they, they didn't imply once, I don't think, that it sounded like, hey, we, are, we developers are just better than you get good. But I think the community blew it up way out of proportion. But in a mean fun way, but then because so much noises are out there, and then Yoshi P is like, okay, I need to write a three page long scrollable. You know, I, I'm glad that they, scroller. I'm yeah. glad he was so in depth, man. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. There, could, yeah. there, go ahead. No, 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 yeah, you're talking, so I thought you're finished. Um, so. Like, cause he didn't have to do this or, well, they, I mean, I don't know if he actually wrote it, but whoever the fuck wrote it, uh, they didn't have to actually do this. Um, like, and like I said, even though I don't agree on a couple other things, uh, that they, that they listed here, right. Um, at least now we know, you know what I'm saying? So we can kind of, I guess, see their mentality on future, on future decisions, you know? Um, but I mean, I, like, I do think they ended up making the right decision um, because the problem is, is that it was just, it was just kind of too late, you know, like, mm. like they just, they just fucked up. I feel like, I feel like this whole raid tier is just, this whole raid tier is just scuff, man. Cause like, if you look at, if you look at P, P5, this raid tier reminds me a lot of Eden's verse and just, it's just all over the place, man. Because P5, in my opinion, is, is harder than P6 and P7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh devour is the hardest shit until you get to the door <laughs> boss for sure 100 percent. you cannot change my fucking mind devour is the hardest shit up until the door boss so and then p6 i still don't even know the order of the mechanics because it all fucking blurs together man 
Like I don't even like every time I go in there, I'm like, oh fuck, what what what's next? Is this the is this the twister? Is this the 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 panel swap? I don't fucking know. And then like seven, man, seven was like uh I was really excited for seven. I was really excited for seven. <laughs> and I think I think that what they did with the platforms was badass. Like I really liked it. I thought I thought that shit was cool. Um, but like, dude, the first like what 70 percent of the fight is just nothing yeah they, literally they nothing. even yeah they even like reuse normal mode mechanics like oh it's the it's it's the same mechanic like it's it's oh, not boy. even different you know so i feel like like seven had such high potential and seven was one of the turns i was really looking forward to i mean obviously the last turn you know you're you're never sure because there's always like a secret phase or, you know, whatever. So, um, I mean, that one's always going to be the most exciting. Well, at least for me, just because, you know, it's completely you know, unknown. You, you know, I'm, I was the opposite. When I saw Seven Dog, uh, in normal mode, I immediately remind, it immediately reminds me of Leviathan and Idol of Darkness. And I tell myself, okay, I can see what they want to do with this fight. They want to experiment the platform, but they better make it good because Leviathan tried that. Yeah. It was bad. And, um, uh, I mean, Idol of Darkness didn't really change the platform, but, you know, they have this uh, memory game and then, you know, the tornado making it also kind of de- make the arena... Uh, it's still a square, but the tornado mm. kind of make it in a way like it become like a triangle, right? If you actually think about it. Because our yeah. mechanic, we have to deal with it in like uh, uh, three groups, right? So, I mean, immediately when I saw that fa- uh, uh, the fight, I was like, oh boy, here we go. This is, this is either going to be an experiment that's really fun or an experiment that's going to go wrong. I enjoy what they do with the arena. But sadly, mechanical wise and the pacing just fall really short. It's so I wouldn't bad, say man. I wouldn't say worse. I wouldn't say worse because it felt just like Leviathan. It felt just like Idol of Darkness. So it's not really worse. It's just, mm. it's down there with them. I don't but know. Overall, I thought Idol I think was it's fine. fine. I hated oh, Idol. Really? I thought it was so. I, bad. Know, I, mean, I think I think it was the worst third turn. But in terms of pacing, I thought it was still fine because at least there was like mechanics you had to learn going to the end of the fight whereas like this one's like literally just leviathan too actually this is worse than leviathan yeah i think i think mm-hmm. leviathan still had its pros like it you still know, had un quote unquote mechanics up yeah. until like the tsunami 2 whatever you know what's sad about this turn though is that the last 30 percent is just it's just a banger like it's so fun i think mm-hmm. and i feel like if they just would have put more of the, like the whole fight just should have been those trios honestly or of the yeah, harvest really or whatever it just should have been but all they, of those harvests but but they ran out of idea though like okay this particular one i shit on this particular mechanic so many i i i, I sequence so bad you know after the part where you do the double holy platform when the middle bridge appear and you combine you guys go on the platform and soak the holy right mm. and then after that you go to south there's the double punch yeah and That's then the, the stupid punch yeah. mm-hmm. and then you go to the north and then you go back to south like how is that a savage mechanic at least when you do the punch right you know actually during the normal mode i already been struggling you know we do some theory crafting oh this punch must be different this punch would either be alternate or maybe the tail wouldn't be the arrow maybe the face will shake maybe there will be like a titan jabin you know like titan maximum do the punch out there that was fucking awesome, right? Remember the first time we did it, Zeno? We just thought he's gonna alter the punch. He could punch the same way. <laughs> like, okay, that's cool. But this time it's just whoop. The arrow. I'm like, what? How? That's the same as normal. How did you not at least elevate that? How is that not at least a jabate or a tail or a double? All the savage things that we all seen that they always done. This time they totally just keep it the way it was, just like normal. It also had like a really long cast bar too. It's it was so yeah. insane. But actually, something I I really thought about P seven was like those black holes that spawn spawn under the arena. They could have been easily just baited on the party, and if you weren't on like the specific platform you needed to be on, they would just break. And you would just wipe, right? Mm. They could have easily implemented something like that, like Shinryu, almost just kind of like mm. reversed. But yeah, there's, it just okay. like there was there was so many like good things that they could have done, and they just really ruin the fucking fight like progging that fight was so miserable it was so fucking miserable progging that fight man like was, you yeah. you basically you're asleep up until the first yak and you kind of wake up like oh there's a yak here okay okay find the yak all right and then you fall back asleep until purgation because week one purgation that was that shit was monkish theory dude yo you go to this platform you go to this platform <laughs> then you meet in the middle then you swap platform dude that shit was crazy but so then you wake up there and then you know you do the the harvest or whatever, 
Um, but uh, this, oh yeah, oh yeah. So, so what I was saying earlier is this rate tier is like all over the place, right? Is the DPS check was it was either not tested or they didn't give a fuck because in five, six, and seven, that shit is ridiculously low. And I remember like, okay, not now. Now I know like the first two turns, they're not really supposed to have a DPS check, but I remember back in, uh, you know, Eden's gate, Voidwalker had a little bit of a DPS check, had a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, it -hmm. wasn't like six where you can fucking have, okay. I was in this party finder group. We had 16 deaths and we wiped it only 3%, only 3%. And we had 16 deaths. That is because uh, those were because those were tuned to crafted gear. Those were really. I don't think they were. I think they were tuned for like. I think they were tuned for bis from last tier. (laughs) I think uh, yeah. I think I think the this tier was definitely tuned for crafted, and you're just really seeing like a discrepancy because of the uh, the tome weapon on some groups. I mean, pretty much like in party finder technically too. You could if you're really lucky, you could technically have everybody in your party have a tome weapon, right? Like assuming they got lucky. But like, yeah, I think it's just the fact that like they they balance. That's why it's kind of weird about the third or the last turn, right? Like when you think about it, it's like mm. P five, P six, P seven, ridiculously fucking easy fights, right? Like to the point where you were literally using tank LB threes and healer LB threes and prog to mm-hmm. cheese mechanics, right? P six, P seven both had mechanics like that, right? Sack strat, uh, tank LB two, uh, Coachella two, right? Um, and then you get to the door boss, and it's like. Yep. Eden's verse? Is that like what, <laughs> yeah, what is this doing here? Like get out of my this is not this is the wrong raid tier to be in. <laughs> um it, it, it's really funny because like you said, like it does feel out of place because I remember so many t- like times we were progging, I'm like I remember progging P6 and I remember like being like like what the fuck is this? Like what what is this? Like I remember we progged it so fast, like groups progged mm-hmm. it so fast. And like granted, some of that is because like you know, you didn't really have to learn the last mechanic of the fight, like you did like Voidgate 2 or like a con flag because you could just cheese it but it's like still like even getting there there's like in p6 it's like you have okay let's see uh the first mechanic is like the 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 stack and like uh a a protein a we have to move into right that doesn't happen to like 40 seconds in because the buster's right before right after that you have limit cut which is probably your first major mechanic then after that you have like the defamation plus donut but after that it's like you have the buster, which takes like 30 fucking seconds to go off in the first place. And then you have like the first um, like jabate panel thing, right? And once you learn that jabate panel thing, which I think most groups had one play, like one player who could do it like almost instantly. Mm-hmm. It was like a non-mechanic almost, right? It was, it was, yeah. you really didn't have to and think the, about it. And the thing is, even if you fucked it up, like even if you got hit, yeah. it didn't kill you. It, yeah. it just gave you a damage, damage down. down. Mandate, the, the yeah, down, yeah, and the damage down didn't even matter. Like you, you, like you could literally have a raid wide damage down and still kill it like with a death or two. Yeah. Like, it just, it, if the they fight swap, felt like non-mechanic. If they swap six and seven and they mix seven exactly the way it is, but obviously tuned to phase two DPS check, I think seven would have been a really good uh, six. And six, if they do more with the panel swap, more randomness, more variety, more more like yeah, more 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 var- variant, and those twister actually one shot you like how savage mechanics should be like in a turn three. That turn tr- that that turn six would have been elevated to such a good uh, turn seven. But but this is only I mean this conversation I I always think only think about this mainly because usually when the turn three is shit like Leviathan I say the same. I think Leviathan should have been turn two. Void Watcher if they add in one more cycle it would have been such a good turn three. Same for. Ifrit and Garuda, right? If Ifrit and Garuda do more stuff, it would be such a better turn three, and then Idol of Darkness wouldn't be a better turn two. Usually, it's because of how bad the turn three is that you start to realize that the turn two could have been so much better, you know? Like, you for me, had, anyway. You had Voidwalker as a turn three. It's called Fate Breaker. <laughs> oh, okay, that's yeah, true, true. Yeah, you see? It works, you see? Yeah, it works, yeah. 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 Um, actually, one thing about P6 too is that the, the final mechanic, Cockexia 2, literally easier than the first one Mm -hmm. and it's not like not even like easier as in like very slightly it was like very significantly easier because there was like there was no like rng it was like literally just hey you get a snake wing face front or back and then each side only had two safe spots you could go to right and that just like would like greatly reduce the difficulty of the mechanic and it was like like what 
like what is this right like for like a final mechanic it's like mm -hmm. like even though you tank lb it it's like i think a lot of players could just do it like, like that, do it right if they wanted to that fight would have been a lot harder if the uh kachexias would have been swapped you know yeah because like the mechanic kind of completes itself on its own yeah because you it can't because yeah. it forces you to one side and then it also forces you to at least like a safe or an unsafe panel so then you just have to kind of look for a little bit and just go the just you just have to look for the untether one and then just go on the safe spot of that and you're fine so it's, it's almost like the mechanic resolves itself just naturally and you don't really have to think too much the only thing you really have to think about is uh the front or back i guess but i mean like if i mean if you're gonna hit people you just you just tank lb fuck it you know it doesn't even it doesn't yeah, even matter so, you know? yeah this tank lb is the weird thing you know? it doesn't give you a damage down so it doesn't matter you know you know, I hear this. Uh, I hear this. Uh, also, it, uh, I I think it's also a very meme thing, right? Like, I'm not sure whether the guy is like joking or the guy is being serious, right? So someone told me, right? Why do you guys think LB three? My static could do it properly. So he's trying to imply to me that his static is good. So I ask him, wait, if your static is good, why are you guys doing that mechanic? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, uh, so yeah. why, why are we discussing this you shouldn't even be doing that mechanic <laughs> because it's skippable already like next week pf is gonna skip it already you know easily fair fair uh, i mean you can skip a week one which is a funny thing too this is actually yeah, yeah. i think I, I, I was i kind of like thought upon a little bit before prog too it's like you have there's a lot of mechanics that are tuned to like where you're almost killing before them like week one before like for example where you get to right you were so close to skipping Voidgate 2 week 1 with like really good damage. And if you had a Tome weapon, if your party had extreme weapons like going into that, I almost 100% think that you would almost strive to just skip it every single time for prog. Mm. I mean, is that a good thing? I mean, if we go back to no, like... No, it's not a good thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Word, we go I mean, the fact that you can tank LB and heal LB mechanics right now for prog is not yeah. a good thing. I think, mm -hmm. I think yeah. turn 3 took like 2 or 3 hours to actually kill. After clearing it's uh, the fastest. P6, it's yeah, the fastest. like it was. I was like surprised when it died. I'm like, holy shit! Like, I mean, I wasn't surprised, but like, I was like, damn, like this is, you know, that's insane, right? That was the fastest. I think a third turn's ever died after a second turn death. Mm. Damn. Uh, you think they're gonna do this again? You think they're yeah. gonna delay this again? I think it's good. Um, I, I think love it's it. Good for the game, yeah. Yeah, no, it's I good love for it. The game, yeah. I love it. I just think that they should, uh, maybe. They should balance it for crafted, but maybe at 1%. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know. Like, it's it's really weird because, like, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, Savage Savage has always been one, like one of those things where it's like, sure, it's really fun to prog and blind prog and like kill as fast as possible. But like in the grand scheme of things, like literally prog is like 1% of Savage, one, like overall. Yeah, yeah. So like, as long as the fights are fun, I don't really care how fast it like takes to kill, right? Like it could take... 14 hours or something and it could be like Eden's Gate where like the, the fights are just really fun to do you know it's like so I don't really think it matters too much for me personally as long as the fights are good yeah it's just I, the thing though yeah go ahead oh uh, I was just gonna say yeah I was just gonna agree with what you said like 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 to me f fun fun is more important than difficulty but that comes from the yeah. perspective of I do the content over and over and over and over and over again so mm -hmm. so if a fight is not fun but like hard like we'll okay we'll use i mean well okay this might be not the best example but like a4 like a4 was just hard it, it, it was like there was nothing fun about a4 it was just miserable yeah. it was just awful right well i i hated a4 i did not think a4 was fun um but uh but like titan for example so e4 that was one of my favorite savage turns ever just because of so, because it was so fun that 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 first phase is the best first phase for me that they've ever made and i love that fight so much and yeah. i didn't care that it got cleared super fast like it didn't matter like the clear times does, doesn't matter for me personally i you know i can see the perspective of it mattering to other players you know that that they don't repeat the fight so it's a different it's a different mentality and i understand but i'm saying for me uh fun doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a super hard fight is all so 
Yeah. So I don't care if the rate tier gets cleared in fucking 14 hours or, you know, 40 hours. It doesn't matter. Like as long as the yeah. fights are fun, like I'm, I'm fine with that. Like, I mean, as long as again, right. Back to the beginning of the show, right. As long as the balance is right. Uh, you get a good pro in the replayability is good. The fight, the fight is fun. That's good enough for me. Right. So whether it delay a week or not, don't really matter. I'm only afraid that they will look because this rate here is just all, all over the place. And the, the one week delay start all this, maybe because if they just do it just like week one, and then obviously then the DPS check is not as high, then even as bad as Machinist, Warrior, blah, blah, blah is, the fight will still be done. Maybe this conversation, maybe this apology, maybe this reasoning wouldn't come in light, right? But because of that, it, I, I think the one week delay did, a, 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 did play a very big part how it comes down to eventually everything, not just the fight, but also like, outside the fight, the balancing, and then the, all these talks, right? I'm just thinking in 6.4, given that they're going to go into the next expansion, are they going to still do it the same way? Or are they going to do it also delay, but make it better, which obviously then costs more development time? Or are they just going to go back to fuck it, you know? I mean, it's, it's obviously one of the three, right? Go back to week one, stick the way it is now, or improve it by delaying it. It's one of the three, right? I just don't know, like, you know, in seven, you know, 7.0 in the horizon, uh, it, it depends heavily whether we get a 6.3 ultimate. If we don't, then I should assume a 6.5, then they have too much on the plate. So, uh, so it really depends on uh, how they, how they, how they, you know, how they, how they delegate their development time. But I personally don't think the delay is, uh, is, 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 is a bad thing for overall. Like for oh, parts, it's awesome, right? Oh, you know? I think the yeah, I love amazing. the delay. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's awesome, man. They have lessons let... they have to learn, though. <laughs> yeah, For example, yeah. they need to do a maintenance. And they do yeah, why really... that was so weird. Yeah. Why the fuck did yeah. they do oh, a yeah. maintenance? Yeah. That was so, so weird. Like, I, I think everybody was just assuming that they would have done it like they do at the beginning of the expansion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, like, why wouldn't you do it that way? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um... Like Good. that's the way they need to do it. Just delay everything. Just, just because it'll give you time. See, because like, okay, I am a changed man, and I actually enjoy the story. So the one week delay, I do, I do. I've been doing the story. Can all I quiz of, you on some stuff, man? I mean, you can try. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if lore, I'll know it any better than you. I'm a lore master <laughs> when it comes to in Walker. All right. Um. Go, go, go. But I like. Like, I like being able to, one, do the primal, two, do the story, like, do all that extra shit, like, do all that bullshit, because when they release everything at once, it's like, well, I guess I'm not doing this fucking primal, well, I guess I'm fucking skipping this fucking story, you know, and then I have to go back later, you know, so me personally, I love the delay, like, I think it's awesome, but... I'm also speaking from a content creator standpoint too, because it just gives me so much more shit to do. So I love it. Um, but I do think it was stupid that they didn't have a patch for it. Like they just should have did it like they do at the beginning of the expansions. And I think everything would have been a lot better. Mm -hmm. I, I think even from a casual standpoint on that, you know, everybody loves that, even if they're not a content creator or whatever else, because it gives them time to kind of absorb the stuff that they can do pretty quickly and kind of get into the, the groove of everything. And then uh, when they start going with their casual or whatever static, I mean, that's, they may have nine hours a week to raid and play the game, and that's all they can do is raid. But if they have that first week buffer, they can actually enjoy some of that content before they get into that groove of just raiding every time they log in. Um. I think a lot of people, a lot of, especially casual players, I think the only people that actually really complained about it were like the, the raiders, honestly, and that was just the raiders who didn't like the, um, I guess the the tome stuff, right? Yeah, like that, that the, is kind of weird. It too. was kind of obnoxious doing yeah. two hours worth of tome yeah. farm. That was fucking obnoxious. <laughs> just do maintenance right before the reset. Yeah, I happens. don't see why they just don't do it maintenance, just... man. It's fucking dumb. The craft it, oh, that was so nice, dude. One of the worst things about Prague is craft gear. Like, oh, mm -hmm. so obnoxious. Yeah. Especially, like, I had so, been burnt so many times in the past, too, like, wrong melds and stuff. That's so like, when that happens during Prague and you're already, like, kind of, like, trying to brute force stuff, it's like, stress on time again. You know, we, we have talked a lot of, in given criticism about the balance and everything else in Final Fantasy XIV, but if we start thinking maybe comparatively, 
Hal is is Final Fantasy fourteen really in a dire situation with that, or is it just kind of like a bump in the road? I mean, I think it's just kind of a bump in the road. Final Fantasy has a really good history of like, like, oh, like way more times than not, shit has been good, you know, than like fucked. Like, actually, this the thing that happened with the door boss has been the first time ever. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. they have never to to my knowledge, from what I can remember. Uh, they have never nerfed a boss when the raid tier has been current. It's completely different when it's not current. When it's not current, who the fuck, who the fuck cares, dude? Nerf, nerfs, nerfs don't even fucking matter when it's not current. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm talking about when it's current. And I do not think that they have ever had to do this. They it done it sense. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, th- I was about to say, right? Like, b- like, I also feel like in Heaven's Word, the balance is not proper. I mean... T- t- Astrologian was just straight up like unplayable on release, right? Mathematically, it just doesn't do enough in, in anything. You know, like the buff is not enough. The, 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 the cards buff is too RNG to be consistently enough. Number one. Number two, the heals, not enough. Number three, the barrier, not enough. So like already bad, right? And then uh, they also have like the intelligence debuff. So not every group run Mong. And then like Dark Knight is just so much better in terms of damage and, and cooldowns. So you might as well just bring uh, Dark Knight over Paladin, right? So it's like the balance wasn't bad back then. Uh, I'm sorry, wasn't good back then. But because it was the first expansion, it was the first time they raised a the level cap. It was the first time they introduced and unleash Savage, you know, throw on the word Savage to all the Raiders. Like in, in, the, in the second court, yes, yeah, Savage first came out, but not a lot of people do it. But in 3.0, the first time Savage is truly unleashed to everybody, right? And then first time you get new jobs, three jobs, First time you get a level increase. First time they add in so much. Like the, the it's the first time they have to do something new and then balance something more. So I give them like a pass, you know, like for Heaven's Word, I give them a pass, you know, all these things that I've missed, fine. But from Heaven's Word until today, which is like, you know, seven, eight years, eight years, seven, eight years, I expect it to be better. But this time it's the worst since then. And it's the same, right? Like, uh, uh, Alexander, the first time they nerfed a boss A6S, the Vortexer, Swindler, Brawler, well, Blaster, right? That was kind now, of that was a bug, right? That, that no, was, no, they also nerfed it. No, they also nerfed did it. They, they nerf also it? nerfed the. I don't, yes. I don't, I don't, I don't remember that they nerf. Did. They did, they did, they, they, they nerfed the, they nerfed the boss's HP as well. So it's like, uh, you know, Dang. now, now coming back so far, so far, right? We we come back to this situation, but hey. It's not the first time they see this, and overall, you know how how well they did for Shadowbringer. Uh, I, that's, I, yeah. I, mm, that's the I don't thing. Know what it's to... like Shadowbringers, man. <laughs> yeah. So where do we go from? The... But you know, you, you know, it's the first time they do number crunch. I, I guess that's a. Uh, uh, I mean, I, it just I'm, well, I'm they had to it pretty good, reason, right? Already, you know? right? They, they already. Make it... I mean, the last tier was pretty solid, wasn't it? Just last tier was no. last tier was okay. No, it was alright. It's no, okay. The, the it's one to forget. The, the yeah, thing is, it's like yeah, it's very medium. It's a, I think it's the two minutes. I think it's really all it is is yeah. the two minutes. I think that's the issue that they're struggling with right now because they they didn't really think about I guess the drawbacks of making everything two minutes because now like it, it goes back to the start where like everything everybody has the same strength and weaknesses, right? Outside like select jobs like maybe piled in black mage who don't really have as much bursts and more sustain and they th- like this is the first time they've done something like this right like they completely changed like the fundamentals of the games when it comes to like the bursts and the buff windows i think that's like the big thing that they're kind of struggling with right now i'm curious to see i wonder why they decided two minutes i don't know did, like why did, did you guys remember before and walker release they talk about Maybe maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe maybe I maybe I'm talking out of my ass here. But I think Yoshi P said something when they were talking about bards, right? They talk about why bards songs are the way it is now. Is they want to give bard the liberty that don't want to make you feel like you must do your bar when you get the whole three notes or something. I don't play bard. I don't know, but I I like recall. And then they also talk about something like there's a reason why some. Abilities are 90, some abilities are 60, some abilities are 2 because we don't want you to lock in to just throw and put all your apples into one basket and just do a 2 minute burst, right? So some jobs are 1, some jobs, you know, uh, from 90 change to 1 so that now you can have a solo 1 minute and then a 2 minute that you can join in but not necessarily restricted to make everything 2 minute. 
And then ninja happened. And then now the state of the game is like that. So I'm 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 like really confused. Like, do they do they know like exactly where they're gonna go with this, you know? I mean, what, what would you guys do? You want to like just completely scratch the whole two minute concept and kind of go? Yeah, back it needs to be, yeah. needs to be just one minute. <laughs> yeah, just one minute. No, every no every fucking minute or you know whatever. Have have minute and two minutes. I don't know. I think Bring, one minute and two minute would be nice. I mean, that's kind of how yeah. it is now for some jobs too. It's like it's like Ninja, for example. Ninja, have, yeah. They have like a big two minute, but they also have like a decent one minute and Samurai's the same way. I think the issue is that there's just no, I mean, at least before, right, Ninja had 60 second trick, but now it's like two minute mug. Mm -hmm. It's a different situation. I mean, is are we worried that's going to homogenize everything too much? Just keep going in this direction? Or do we want to start separating out? I mean, they've already said that they're going to go in this direction, though. Yeah. So, like, because they've already stated it, I, I mean, I doubt that they're going to change their mind. So we just have to Balance. make the best of, like... The, this situation and i just balance think that a it, one minute and two minute would be better than like just one you know i mean balance it the job can be close damage but not too much difference balance it is fine like on 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 paper on the back end rdps everything in everything looks the same it's not a bad thing but then they have to change the gameplay right if the gameplay is engaging, if the gameplay is different, it's okay if they do the same damage. So at least you got the variety. At least whatever job you take it, you don't feel like, ugh, machinish, or uh, paladin. Like paladin and warrior get so much stick this right here, man. Whenever a paladin and a machine, uh, uh, whenever a paladin machine is, like even Ray Mage sometimes, when they join like a PAS, everybody is just like, I mean, this was like before the nerf, right? Everybody is just like, oh, yo, uh, door boss, door boss for the next two hours. I, I'm like, I, I feel bad, you know? Like, I feel like if, even if they do the same damage or, or, or similar, like maybe a couple percent off, but the gameplay separates them, honestly, thing I think is I think it's good enough, right? Right now, it's just... Right now, it goes uh, back to the core problem, the balance, right? It's mainly the balance. I mean, this problem's just going to get harder and harder as they, every time they release an expansion. Exa and a new job. That's why. That's yeah. the problem. How are they going to add in a new job? If, 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 if the pattern persists, we are expecting two new jobs. We will go into 21 um, jobs. They can't even balance one. Like, every role right now got one that sticks out that is not right. How do you add in another one into those st and still keep that new one balanced and then the one that sticks out uh, go back into the mix that it can play with the rest of the, of the job in a row? Like now, this next expansion is gonna be with with this current balance right now. It, it will be interesting to see how um how they go into the next expansion with like new battle system. I mean, we don't have a lot of whole news about seven point oh, but the new battle system are they gonna rework? I get a rework the roller. Remember just now when I I told you I know it sounds very boring or it sounds very like eh, highly unlikely, but why don't you just separate two D, uh, DPS into two types, damage and support, you know, rather than Melee caster, melee, melee. I mean, not saying that, not saying that caster or say machinist cannot be a main damage, right? But maybe they need to consider recategorizing them. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know, right? I'm, it's again, funny because one paid to do well, it. Well, so like, so like the shed, so like the balance in Shadowbringers was like, you know, obviously better than what it is now. And they made more changes from Stormblood to Shadowbringers. They made like, in some cases, virtually no changes from Shadowbringers to Inwalker, but the balance is completely fucked. So, what the fuck? Like, how the fuck do you do be. that? <laughs> yeah, like, what the, <laughs> like, how the fuck do you do that? Like, this is, it's just, it's just funny because, um, they about actually Africa? made, well, so they actually made bigger changes going from Stormblood to Shadowbringers, but then small, like, what, like, some jobs didn't even change from Shadowbringer to Inwalker. And it's just fucked. So, like, how the fuck do you do that, man? That's like, what the fuck? I really think that they just did not. They just did. They just did not play test some of this shit, man. There's no way that they play tested some of this shit. Which is better? Is it better for us to acknowledge and accept that they didn't play test it, and that's why it's bad? Or is it better for us to say, I'm, I'm sorry, which is worse? The fact that they didn't play test it and it's so bad now, or they actually play test it and it became worse. Which is worse? 
Well, I don't Which know. one would you accept? I don't think they can play test it though, right? Like realistically, how do you play test the jobs in an environment of high skill and low skill? You know, it's like almost impossible for them. Like even if they, I mean, they would have to like literally like fly in like a bunch of people that are actually like really yeah, good yo, that's a good idea. That's exactly what I was like <laughs> suggest. You know what? You know what? Team my... is really good, but we we know that their in-house team like isn't going to be as good as like literally the best players in the world, right? So it's like I don't even know how you could play test certain things, which is why I think the balance of the expansion is always like really fucked up because like mm -hmm. they haven't really ever had a really good expansion launch. They've always it's always been really yeah. bad balance. Yo, ones. follow me on this. This just hit me. You know who went to the Shadowbringers media tour and why the balance was so good? You know who didn't go to the Inwalker media tour <laughs> oh and God. why the balance is so fucked? Hmm. Wonder why. I really wonder why that is. <laughs> <sighs> well, uh, when do you guys think we're going to have like some information coming up for uh, 7.0? Well, I'm excited. Way? I'm excited. Oh, 7.0. I'm excited for the next Fed Fest. I want to meet you guys in person. I mean, Dude, there, there going, is going to be a next one. I think I'm pretty sure. I don't know if they're going to do like one for every region, though. They might just do just one. I don't care. I'm mm -hmm. going. I'm going to yeah. be there. I'm going, dude. Okay. Okay. You're going JP, both EU and NA? JP, you know? EU, NA. Doesn't matter, Ooh. dude. I'm going. I'm going to be there, dude. Okay. okay. What if it's the same usual three regions? Will you go to EU and NA this time? Oh, I don't know. I mean, mm. fuck it. I don't know. Maybe. And I still remember that time you went to that first fan fest, dude, and you're like, man, I don't know if I want to go. Okay. Dude, I didn't have any fucking money, man. <laughs> I I say I I I was I didn't I had nothing, man. I was like I had just got partnered like, you know, like I don't know, maybe like eight months or something before or some something like that. You and, also uh, said if the tier was coming out, you're like, fuck, I'm not gonna go. Uh, uh if it's gonna conflict mm -hmm. with tier rating and everything no, I'm gonna fan fest. Yeah, but they don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I was, dude, I, I mean, I didn't even know what a fucking fan fest was, man. Uh, yeah, I was I living, like, I remember when I moved here, dude, I had like like $40 in my bank account. I'm just like, well, guess I'm buying ravioli this week again, you know? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. It was fucking rough, man. It was hard back then. Those are like, I didn't actually start generating revenue for like two years actually having also to know about twitch was this really bad at generating revenue back then too yeah, yeah. Like, like, there were more resources now that were now it's a lot better yeah yeah uh -oh. you didn't have shit the only way you generated revenue back in the day if you weren't a partner was donations that was it that was literally oh yeah it. the tip jars and that yeah, yeah there was no there was none of this affiliate gifted subs tier subs bits none of this shit man it was all just literally you were partnered and you could generate revenue through subs or donations that's it you know you know like as much as i always meme about the game or talk shit about the game that some people think i am only doing right or, or, or your deal yoshi p changed so much of our life here now twitch yes twitch got better yes but if not for the game the longevity of the game we wouldn't be here we, we wouldn't even be sitting here right like but here's the thing though all the things that i've done all the things that i say over the past seven years, will I ever, like, all of you here, I I think, I assume all of you here, have a chance to, like, talk to Yoshi P. I, I wonder, right? Me, by the time 42 years old, 43 years old, dude, I've been dreaming about going to a fan fest even back in Final Fantasy XI when I was, like, what, 22, 23 years old. It just never, it was not realistic, right? But now, fast forward 20 years later, I'm in the position that I can actually do it. But then, when I get there, will I, like, even have a chance to like look at him in person and talk to him yeah. dude i don't know man 100%. we'll see man we'll see yeah. i mean i remember you know i think we even got you an invitation to go to at one time you're like yeah no, that, I was can't so, go. that was too last minute yeah that was too last uh, minute yeah, yeah. and uh For then sure, you would the have been time. able to i'm sure of it we'll see yeah i feel i got this feeling right the next fan fest me and lucy pyre will sit on the bench and like you know <laughs> Bitch, the videos is... the thing that we talk about <laughs> We are never gonna talk to Yoshi P himself, you know. Maybe. Uh, what Maybe. is with you and Lucy Pyre? Dude, her content is awesome. <laughs> uh, I haven't checked her out. I don't. I don't know. 
Uh, I'm guessing the... <sighs> okay. No, I, I trust you. I trust you, Arthas. Uh, I do. Um, I guess uh, we went over pretty much most of these questions that I had lined up for it. I, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else that we're kind of missing here. We went really deep. <laughs> we went actually a lot deeper than I thought we were going to go. Um, but is there anything else you guys can think about that we should really talk about job balance wise or like game balance wise, anything like that that we might be seeing coming down the pipeline did in we, the next few we, patches? Wait, did we miss this one? Well, or before we go into the next one, did we miss this one? Like, how do you guys feel about the 1% correction slash nerf in general? Like, how did your group take it? How did your friends take it? How do you feel it is when it comes to, say, Party Finder? Obviously, since that's the most, uh, most access content that we do, right? Like, how do you guys feel about the 1%? I mean, I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought it was fine. I don't know why they nerfed the last boss. It's kind of weird. I feel like the last boss. Yeah, the last boss really wasn't a problem. It was the door boss. Also, really weird too, because like the when they said one percent, I think we're all like assuming one percent, but the nerf to the door boss is like actually like three mm percent. -hmm. They nerfed it by like sixteen hundred RDPS or something. It mm -hmm. was it was a massive change. Um, I think they might have even over nerfed it because like the DPS check in the door boss is like only like a not even like a thousand higher than P seven. Kind of weird. Yeah. I think they, they wanted to just save all the groups that they could at the moment they were still raiding and just, I mean, oh yeah, it, you got it every week now. You get it easy. You you probably would have actually seen a lot of groups disbanding, almost akin to maybe like Eden's verse or... Uh, Dude, I this guess, door boss fucked up a lot of groups. Yeah, like a lot of people were kidding the game, like actually. Mm -hmm. So they are probably... I wouldn't be surprised if they were worried about like, just like, hey, yeah. just, just nerf it to like to just to hell, who cares? Mm -hmm. Just save yeah, as many three weeks subs later, as you can. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think three weeks is fair, right? Like, like I, 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 if they didn't nerf this boss, I can see like normal group, casual group, already struggling to find time to play, let alone proc. That includes the PF, by the way. Like, I can see like week four, week five, we are not going to see any P2 consistent. I'm not, I'm not saying that there won't be any, but like there will be a lot of like, like, you know, you open the PF, you just finish your dinner, you log into Final Fantasy XIV, you want to have a good time, you to proc something, you don't have a static, you open the PF, hey, there you go, that's a phase two. If they didn't nerf this, right, I would dare say for the next couple of weeks, you're not going to find consistently five party for you to choose at any one time to proc it. We are only starting to see like this weekend, four or five days later after the nerf, we are now only starting to see more groups finally getting comfortable to proc the phase one, and then some groups going to phase two to learn. Like, me and Zeno be sitting there to find for a reclear. We even have to take people with uh, HC2 proc, and it still takes us two hours to fill. Like, I think the nerve is more healthy to the game, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. no, everybody's just going to give up, you know? I agree. I think it was, it was definitely healthier for the game. Yeah. As, as shitty as it was. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, Here's, I guess, the question. Should they have done it even earlier? Or was it, like, right at the right point to where all the world first and all the world stuff going on was kind of dying down and over? Uh, and could. this will go in in a week two. It gives everybody a little bit of relief. I think if they're going to do nerfs, week three, four is probably the best time to do it, mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's, like, the difference between, like, like generally all the hardcore groups are done, like, week one, maybe, maybe like, week two for, like, the high-end midcore groups or something. But... Yeah, like most groups are that were like like hardcore progging, putting a lot of time into it, they're done by that point. So the only people who are left are like the ones that are just either very slightly behind. Like I said, I knew a group who was on Enrage of PA Part Two the night before it got nerfed. Um, but I think the big thing is too, it's like, dude, just like send a send a fucking notice out, right? Like let people yeah. put in the <laughs> extra hours to do it, right? Like give people the chance to do extra hours so they can finish it. That was a shitty part, right? Like they just they ghost nerf, they just like this. Boom, you know, no one was expecting it, right? And they just did it. And like all the groups who were like, I guarantee you, if there was a notice like a week in advance, they're like, hey, we're nerfing this fight next week, get it done. They people probably would have put an extra hours to clear. Yeah. If they were close. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Well, also, the communication just would have been mind. good to like, I mean, that's a big change, right? Like you have buffs plus you're nerfing a boss, you know? Yeah. I mean, the, I, when, the buffs that, or the, 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 yeah, sorry. like, yeah, like they haven't, what you said, like A6, yeah, so like A6 got nerfed or whatever, uh, but that was, you know, that was a really long time ago, so there hasn't been anything since then, um, 
you would th- like that's huge, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, you would think that they would send out a notice or something, man, but they didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it was definitely the most mind. It was the most mind blowing, smallest random patch notes I ever read. You know, people were telling me, "Do you expect any like job buffs?" I'm like, "Dude, it's a six point two one. It's such a small patch. I'm not sure whether we would even see any any buff, right? Like, and then you know, when when I when I read the Warrior Paladin, my chat is already going wild. I haven't even read to the bottom. I mean, you know, I have it on my full screen, right? So obviously, when I scroll up, you know, the 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 Paladin and Warriors on top, and they see the bottom faster than me. Everybody's going crazy. Why why are you guys so crazy about Warrior Paladin? Then I start reading the nerf. I was like, wow. They actually really do it. I mean, I think they should done it, but now, today, not saying anything in the 6.21, like it's 6.25. Okay, maybe that would have been way too late. <laughs> maybe, maybe there would be any more raiders in, in statics already. That would have been too late. But, you know, at least I expected a news like that to be like, you know, there's a four cards, right? They just, boop! And I, I, it, it kind of blew my mind, yeah. You know, I, this this week was also a... I'm just thinking about it now. This week was... Or uh, the third week or whatever was um another reason I think they may have nerfed it now was because to give more people a chance to clear because there's going to be savage dungeons coming out. Mm-hmm. And once those come out, people might be focusing on that more than the raid tier. Mm-hmm. So they want to try to get as many clears. Well, I would imagine so that they're because they're staggering this release for a reason, right? They want people to do this like right when it comes out. So this nerf, if they would have waited like another week or another two weeks, it may have it may have affected that a little bit more than if they just would have done it, you know, like right away, you know? There's also the the wonky thing with the way marks. Oh. Right? That they did. <laughs> just... Yo, yo, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know we were going to talk about that today, but now we can. <laughs> because, okay, I just want to say, okay, I just want to say this, all right? All right? Right now. Dick's out. That's right. Get him out. Dick's out to the motherfucker that put those markers down because holy fuck you are a savior you have got you have got more people p7 clears than every content creator combined brother and we salute you we respect you we love you for taking do we ever know who it is do do we ever like there are rumors community do we know there are rumors i have been sent screenshots i will not reveal the individual but uh (laughs) <laughs> hmm. but they are a hero mm. and uh i want to officially thank you for your services and i just gotta say man yo what dude <laughs> it's so fucked up it's yeah, so here we go, yo, here we go. it's so fucked up the square edict sees this shit and they're like nah fuck them and then they ban him right they ban him but th- but then they're like yo actually that's kind of a good idea yo let's implement that shit how the fuck are you gonna ban somebody and then implement the thing that got them banned that doesn't make any sense bro like what the fuck you like that doesn't that, dude it should not work like that it makes that. sense you, dude you know that's how Mark Zuckerberg did to the uh, Vingerfoss brothers that's what they did that's what he did uh, man <laughs> I mean, like all those people in jail for like marijuana charges and stuff over in the U.S. <laughs> everything else, and now people making money off of it. Uh, government's making money, anyways. That goes a little too far, but uh, it is funny. It is funny. Uh, I wish. I don't know. We don't have to go into it. I I, I just wanted to bring it up because I thought it was kind of goofy, and I, they do need to fix their waymark system completely. You know. <laughs> they put themselves in this situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they put that, themselves yeah. in this situation because they removed the ability for us to place way markers. Okay. Like, I think that was stupid in general because the only people that's going to affect are the people that are not cheating in the first place. Believe me, the people are cheating in the first, they're still cheating. They're, they're yeah, still, it doesn't, exactly. it doesn't solve anything. Like what they did literally solved nothing because the people that are cheating are still cheating. The people that are not cheating, well, now they just can't move markers in combat. Like what the fuck? So they put themselves in this situation. Like they're like, you should be able to move markers in combat and you should be, you should be able to have more than five slots, man. Five slots. 
That's 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 this whole marker yeah. fiasco is just ridiculous to me. It's just absolutely ridiculous to me because because they put themselves in the situation and now they're making a big deal about the situation that they put themselves into in the first place. It's like what the fuck? Like sometimes I feel like what is Momo's opinion on this? <laughs> Sometimes oh, I feel like what is I'm a, I'm a, uh, yeah, yeah. Why are you asking me? Dude, you haven't said anything about the way markers, dude. Um yeah, I, I'm just uh I'm a, I'm a It's I'm a, a post that went up. I'm a spectator. It, it, yeah, I mean it's something that's out there. Yeah, it's just information to talk about. Uh you know what's really funny? Somebody was like they commented on like my P7 video the other day because I the way markers were there and they're like I can't believe you would still use these after Yoshi P said he wrote up that letter and I'm on subbing now. And I'm like, dude, this video was from like a week ago. Right. Like, <laughs> like, bro, <what? laughs> Holy shit. I'm like, oh, yo, yo, uh, Yoshi P say something, right? Like he, he understood that the market is already saved. The, the culprit is already, uh, uh, apprehend. Uh, please don't use it. Okay. It's one thing for him to say that. And one thing for us to use it. Right. But, I think save you guys some trouble. Don't be that guy in the party that click on it. Oh, Especially dude. Especially like streamers. Oh, do not. Yo, yo, I deleted mine on stream. Yes, on I stream, deleted save. them on stream and then I resaved some just bullshit ones that, that we don't even use, right? Yeah. And then instead of placing them, I just wait there. Until someone else places them. And I mean, yeah. hey, look, I don't want to leave the group. You know, I don't want to join and then mm -hmm. leave because that's pussy shit. You know, that's dumbass shit. That's wasting people's time. That's just, that's just rude. You know, you don't want to do that. So you just, you just try not to look at them. Uh, I mean, you still use them, of course, but like, you know, you try not to look at them unless you're using them. Don't be, don't thing. be that facilitator, basically, because it's one thing that Yoshi P says. And it's the other that somebody watching our stream, haters, hate watcher, cook up a story how it affect their viewing experience or Final Fantasy XIV <laughs> live experience and then get us into trouble. I'm serious. Like the GM, the, the, the set of rules that the GM knows to play with versus what Yoshi P says could be totally different. So like, just don't be the guy that click it. Somebody in the party will click it. Oh yeah. Let those guys somebody will. Win, you know? Somebody will. Just don't be that guy. Yeah. Protect yourself. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what's really weird actually about the patch or the the note that they 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 sent out was like they they said two different things they at first they were like yeah we can't really punish players who keep using it because you know it's already been spread around too much and then at the very end they're like okay please delete this so like nobody can use it it's like it's like two <laughs> yeah. completely different things and we're just like okay well what do we do like is is it can we use them can we not use them it was like yeah i don't know it's, it's yeah different. when i was reading the when i was reading the letter or whatever I was hella confused because at one part it says we caught the culprit, right? You know, the felon, we caught him, you know, the markers that escaped the law, you know, we caught the guy. And then it also says, right, do not use them. Like, don't use them, delete them. But then like after that, it says, well, they're kind of already in circulation and we can't really punish someone that doesn't even know about these programs existence, right? Because there are people that have no yeah. fucking idea about Paisley Park or any of that shit, right? They just go into a party finder, you know, get off work, whatever, go into a party finder, somebody boom, hits the markers are like, oh, sweet, I'll just save these. You know, they have no fucking idea about that. You can't punish those people like they're ignorant. What the fuck? You know, they, they have, they don't know any better, you know? Mm -hmm. So so then, so then they, they talk about that, which is good, which is, which is, you know, fair the way it should be, you know, but, but then above it, they're like, no, delete these markers. Do not save them. Do not use them. And it's like, can I, I'm I just going to delete them on stream. And if someone else hits them, <laughs> then I'm just going to go with it, dude. Cause I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like uh, in this the whole perspective, a lot of different things is that they they just ask please don't and that just doesn't work with na and eu it, it just doesn't uh but it doesn't matter this whole thing's so silly this is just one of those silly things man yeah. <laughs> i i do think they need to get uh they need to figure out like a better way to handle this kind of situation because this is just i feel bad for the guy i hope that guy don't get permanent or something hopefully like a usual you know three max 10 days warning hopefully <sighs> Man, how do you permanently ban someone from this game? Have you ever seen someone get permanently banned and they just don't make another account and just like 
<laughs> I've never, I've never seen it. I've seen some people do some really gross things, and they're around. They're still doing shit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they lose whatever's on their account, I guess. But unless if it's like a PvP reward, it's not that exclusive, right? Yeah. <laughs> like in fourteen, it doesn't really matter. In fourteen, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I just don't like. It just some of the things that they're surprised about just confuse me because okay so you take away the ability for us to place markers in combat okay Ooh. so then you you design a fight that the battle arena that the battle arena changes and you can only like place the markers where you need them like during the battle right like i don't think you can actually can you place them like after you clear you can't right you can't like, do it as well yeah, yeah. like i okay. don't think you can because the arena is different right okay so the only way you can place them is in combat. You need you need to be able basically basically you cannot access parts of the arena that you need to be able to access with the markers. So like they did this to themselves. You know, they put themselves in this situation and it's just funny that they're flipping out about it because these markers are such a huge fucking it's, ordeal for them. It it's it was a big ordeal because of the JPs. I'm not sure whether you guys read this uh Reddit thread regarding uh how the JP feels about this, and then somebody break it down, like translate it. So TLDR, right? JPs, I, I and I and I can tell you that that is true because of my even my own personal experience. JP hates external. Basically, JPs are very they are, they are they are very close within themselves. They do not want anything that is used like via external sources. I guess, simply put, they don't accept any third party, anything to do with third party. Like this, this whole thing became like this, right? Uh, I, I will just try to summarize the, the, the Reddit thread. So what happened was, right? People went into an instance, they thought it was SAS, which was fine. But then when it gets circulated more and more and more, and JP rates a lot, right? More and more and more, people start questioning where did they come from? And then people start to think that, okay, this must come from um, overseas. This is not, this can't be from JP. So yet again, you know, yet again, you know, our game, yet again, our community is being tainted. Now our community is being affected by another third party external sources that is like making our game, oh, quote unquote, escape our law. So then they make a big fuss. So whenever somebody put the marker down in their duty, they will leave. They will walk out of the instance. It's a gesture. They will walk out of the instance. So that it caused a lot of inconvenience. So when people want to genuinely do it, and, and like Zeno say, some people are just clueless. Hey, I saw this market. They were fucking awesome. It helped. I should save this so that the next party finder will be a better experience, right? Make it better for everybody, right? But it turns out the opposite way. When they put down the marker, people leave. They put down the marker, people leave. Not only people leave, people get reported. Who put down the marker? People actually pro. Who it put down really? the marker? I did. Yeah, I wow. did. I put down the marker. Where did you get that marker? Uh, somebody get it from. Don't use that marker. We are leaving. They left the instance. They leave the group. And then people start just getting stuck. Like, what the fuck is going on? So then people start asking a lot of questions. So that is circulate in the JP community. That's why it got attention to the developer. Now, to reinforce this gesture, it might sound stupid. During Dragon Song, when my JP static got to Hoshifon the very first time, uh, the second time, I mean, the very first time, the second time, does that make sense? Yeah. Like when we saw the time loop, right? We were like, okay, we need to figure out something. So a lot of stream teams also start getting their Rin, Rin Bananas group, uh, Kindred all got there, right? Then we were like, how to do this, how to do this, how to do this. So eventually I think Rin, I forgot which Rin, I, I think it was Rin, uh, Rin Banana. So when they did the LB3, they went to FF Logs. They saw the debuff ID change. Instead of being a debuff that make Hoshifan not take any healing, now he take reduced healing. So I presented the information to my JP group. The JP group consists of King Gyo and Rin, which is in you know in this world first, uh, which is now in this world first um Abyssos, right? So the two of them, specifically the two of them, came out and say, Where did you get this information? I say it's public, it's in the FF logs. One of the streamer friends got it. So they were like, which Rin? Rin who? I say, Rin, the gunbreaker guy who is like a mentor in the any community. You can believe his information is real. Then they're like, okay, we need to reevaluate this information because what if this, informa this information is illegal? Where did you oh. get it? Do you have any proof? I say, okay, here's the logs. It's public, but it turns out to be another Rin banana. But now we got two instances that this information is legit. That's not really legit. The debuff timer is masked. So now even though the number changed, how did you know that we should use this information on our prop? We are streaming now. We are a stream team now. 
we don't want this information to be added to the other JP or the developer to see it because now we are using unauthorized information. That's so asking them, then what the fuck do you guys want to do? Why don't we trust? Why don't we trust? Why don't we try the way that we initially wanted to try? Why don't we try L Hewlett LB3? Why don't we try Mili LB3? I'm like, dude, this literally so. <laughs> like, what do you mean? But and uh, we have to, we have to. So we have to become like, okay, guys, it is now a common knowledge that it is thank LB3. I was like, dude, I told you guys one hour ago, why those guys so stubborn? And all that? They say, you need to understand, you know, in JP, we, we take third party unauthorized, non-official, non-legitimate way very seriously. That time, I didn't understand what that means. And as a non-JP, as a filthy guy, guy that my mind is, filled, uh, uh, is being filled with any EU Oceanic player, right? I was like, that is so bad. That is wrong mentality. You are racing whatever way possible, whatever underhand method. No, no. Yeah. So now suddenly this marker situation came in. I was like, yep, that's JP for you. If this is any, if this game is any only, that wouldn't have been the problem. I mean, if this is just an any only MMORPG, even though developed by the JP developers, but only the any communities are the one making noises or feedback, I can tell you, we wouldn't even get this situation where the marker become what it is now. You know? So it's like, the, the JP thing is shit really crazy, you know? So, I think in this whole perspective, like, if I had to say anything, is that they just need to start thinking about the DNA community <laughs> when they come into this stuff and what they're going to do. For example, you know, just letting the data sit there, it's not good. That data needs to be on held and the maintenance needs to happen for it, right? Then there's, like, all DNA cannot be trusted. Just, we cannot be trusted. They're, they're, okay? Yeah. They got a little anonymous mask on, and they're like, I'm in the database, and I got it all. And, you know, it, they're going to do it. Anyone's going to do it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you, uh, it, they, I don't know. And EU can't be trusted either, okay? I rated DSR with some, with some the EU boys, and I loved it. It was awesome. But those cunts can't be trusted either, okay? <laughs> so, so EU and NA, we just can't be trusted. We can't be trusted, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they need a team over there that thinks about this stuff and they make decisions thinking that there are going to be people out there that want to abuse it because they're, they're just not respect. They're not going to do it out of respect, right? I mean, I respect Square Enix tons, right? I, I show lots of respect constantly, but I know it doesn't work. <laughs> the community is going to do whatever they want to do. Uh, all right. You guys want to hit on anything else before we wrap up? We have been going for like two and a half hours. Uh, That's really funny. Um, great show, all, though. All the Fizz Range who are watching this are going to be so fucking mad when you upload it. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> we, we didn't talk about Fizz Range at all, I don't think. I oh, mean, what, well, I don't play why? Fizz Range, man. I stick to what I play, man. I, I, try to, <laughs> I try to not step out of my own boundary, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean you, you play wanna... Machinist, right? A little bit, Momo? 70 cotton you cop content yeah <laughs> hell yeah but that's more than what i play dude yeah well i mean we just know a lot of machinists are upset that's a fact that uh... <laughs> sarah and i in chat <laughs> yo just read your tweet <laughs> redirect him to the tweet oh yeah, 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 yeah. that was a good tweet. tweet momo's tweet ff xiv momo and you'll see his tweet up there it's like how many pages how many tweets is it momo I don't know. A lot. A lot. <laughs> too much. Yeah. Too much reading. Okay. But I think the gist enough. of it, if I remembered right, was that um oh God, what fucking was it? Is that they uh was it a utility job? What was it? Oh god, I'm so kidding. I mean, okay, the issue with machine is uh, for I feel is that the fact that they have to balance okay, so like we, we talked about earlier too with like other jobs, but like they bounce around job stealing and re utility, right? Because, I mean, honestly, all the Frizz range, they're like, I, in my opinion, at least, you know, I think they're on the easier side, right? When it comes to class difficulty, it's like, I feel like they also struggle. Maybe that's like one of the reasons why they're struggling with like balancing it too. Because like, hey, you know, not only do they have Fizz range tax that, you know, exists, but they also have like the Fizz range curse of technically being like the quote unquote easier job that, you know, a lot of people kind of play as a beginner job, right? So like they have that going against them already, and then you have the fact that both Bard and, and or Bard and Dancer are literally the two heaviest uh, impacting RDPS jobs in the game. 
So like you also have to balance between like the high and low end and like how do you balance how do you balance that right when the difference between like a really good dancer and a really bad or really bad dancer is like almost a thousand DPS difference in terms of raid buffs or sorry a, a bad team with a dancer is almost like a thousand DPS difference when you're talking about like the high end and the low end. It's just I don't know it's, I don't think honestly it just feels like they need to nerf the the buff. The amount of buffs that the the range can give if they want to be more balanced or give machinists a raid buff as well because i feel like in its current state when you have bard and dancer who are doing almost 2000 uh i guess uh buff contribution and you have machinists who is selfish it's like how do you balance that you you yeah. can't you can't balance that it's, it's impossible because you give you make machinists a little too close to bard and dancer then in like 90 percent of the content machinist is going to be either required or just meta right where except now it's like machinist is it dude machinist isn't even good in dungeons is it i was talking about this on stream and somebody was like yeah dancer just fucking just shits on machinist yeah, dungeons. AOE, so i'm like yeah. like yeah so machinist see, isn't yeah, like that's the thing yeah, sorry like, let me let me let me inject like, oh, yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me inject real quick i'm almost sorry there like um you know what i forgot what i want to say <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's like when you think of dungeons, it's like oh shit, you know, yeah, machine should be really good because hey, that's a four person party. Da a bard and dancer can't get as much uh, raid utility out of it, and it's just like you know what the fuck, you know, it's like <laughs> it still isn't even good there. It's like what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There, it's it's a oh, yeah, machine yeah, yeah, used to have a raid buff too, man. Is the thing? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. Now. You see, there, there's also this false uh, layer, right? On the ooh, on the Excel spreadsheet, if you have you know people doing manual calculation and put it in tabulator form, they do good damage. But on that spreadsheet, you can't make them do more than the other three existing DPS because they are physical range. So even mm. if they are pure damage, they are up there, but they can't really be up there, but they are up there. But then behind the scene, when you do the all DPS, they are way down there. So then you also have like, like the developer, you know, they, they, they look at machinists like they are doing good. But are they really? And then the players also like, I legit hear a lot of machinists main players come out to tell me, Arthur, what do you, why do people always tell me that machinists suck? I do a lot of damage in PF. I saw the PF machinists do really well. I, I like machinists in my party. And then I'm like, did you guys enrage? Did you guys ever notice that your party damage is a little bit low and you know, don't know where it is? They say, yeah, you know, we did enrage a little bit. I'm like, yeah, that's why. But why? I'm like, I can't explain to you why you need to go to FF Loss and see the difference. Like, that, that's the whole problem with machinists, right? It's, the concept is like that, but it doesn't really work that way, right? Yeah, I mean, you look at Dancer right now, like, I mean, there's gear discrepancy, of course, but like, Top Dancer and P5 is 10.8, and then you look at something like a Melee, right? Melee is 11k, Ninja's 11k, at least 11.1, Monk's 11.1. So like, that's only like a couple... That's only like a couple uh, hundred below, like a melee, right? A dancer, a fizz range, a couple hundred below a melee. That's actually worth bringing. You could almost make an argument that you could bring, if if the other fizz range were equal to that, you could make a like an argument like, hey, you know, double fizz range isn't that bad. But then you look at machinist, and it's like machinist is like in P five, it's nine point nine. It's not even it hasn't even broken ten k yet. Actually, it's not even close. It's nine point nine three. But there's only seventy DPS to break ten k. You look at that, it's like, dude, that's bringing double, double fizz range. That's trolling. You know, that's that's such a massive loss in comparison to the other jobs. And it's like, you could, if you made every fizz range uh, support, you know, oriented, right? It would actually be probably a really well-balanced role. But the fact that they, they want, I feel like they want like a selfish DPS in each kind of like, you yeah, know, archetype. They so want a heal, or a healer, tank. Well, I guess, I mean, tank's like a little bit different, but um caster melee and you know fizz range right they want one in each role so it's like it, it's a really weird situation because fizz range as a whole doesn't really work for the whole selfish thing because of the damage yeah. they contribute there you go we talked about physical range we got it knocked out of the park man um <laughs> this is uh, crazy because double fizz range used to be meta in heaven's yeah with dragoon <laughs> Oh yeah, man, dude, Fizz range did did the most damage. <laughs> oh man, Machinist had a raid buff, did the most damage. Oh man, I, I made oh, God. Machinist mains were they 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 missed their time. 
It's you know, you know, it's uh, never coming back. If you're a machinist main now that you didn't start in Heaven's Ward, you started after you, you fucked up. You, you know, fucked, I, I should I start saw, playing the game I, sooner. I saw one of my JP friend tweet out something. It was, it was a lost memory. Do you guys do you guys know during Creator and during uh, Midas, Wolf first had machinists in them. Now PF don't even want you. <laughs> Ooh. I played Machinist uh, first tier of uh, oh, yeah, 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 in yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Alexander, and uh, that was a lot of fun, man. I, I love, I loved it so much. Machinist was beautiful. It it wasn't perfect, right? It was a little bit off, but it was it was so much fun to play. Uh, and and I I remember the day that our dragoon didn't want to play dragoon anymore, and when we went storm played for uh, storm, uh, he played samurai. And our bard was like, fuck you. <laughs> you can't change. <laughs> I'm so glad they fixed that shit. But man, oh, just fucking old people, man. Except for Momo. I have a bad machinist memory, actually. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I have a bad machinist memory. The okay. Only, okay, so, so, um, okay. So I don't really play physical range. However, however, I wanted the God of War title. So I had to buy a job boost for machinist. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Something I believe, honestly. Yeah, no. So, 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 well, because I didn't want to level it. I don't want to play it. Fuck that. Man. So I bought the job boost and I got the title. <laughs> that was my bad machinist memory. So that's my first and only like <laughs> memory of the job, actually. That's horrible. <laughs> You know, even oh. the delivery, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, even the delivery of my, oh, no. of my machinist boost was like late. I had to How wait long longer than normal too. How long did it take? It took like a few hours actually. Oh Jesus. It wasn't like instant. It wasn't like within like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, right. yeah. Because you know? I bought, because I bought the bard dancer. I bought the bard, uh, dancer and, um, uh, machinist. You know, you know, you know, now I, I know it's a little bit off topic here. You know, now that we talk about, I mean, mock talk, we fuck it, I guess relatable mock talk, mock letter, right? So <laughs> one day, one day before Savage or two days before Savage, we were supposed to, we, we are planning for splits already for our static run, right? So then my ninja was still in, I think, uh, uh, NA, was still in NA. So I was telling my static, okay, you know, uh, since uh, my mid is done, can I bring in my ult so that we can, you know, get my ult, the weapon, so that we can get ready for it? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I couldn't transfer the character for 30 minutes. They told me on the website that there were pending stuff that was not sent to me and I need to wait for it to say. I'm like, I didn't buy anything about the ult, only to realize that it was because of account white mounts that my main had and then my alts didn't claim it so I couldn't transfer which is weird because that alt has been there for four or five years already but because I didn't click the send it to me please I have to wait one day 24 hours before the cruise chaser mount came to me the next day and then I couldn't transfer the character for one whole day that's my that's my more letter experience. So next time, right? Any one of you in chat or any one of you in this show right now, Frosty, Zeno, Momo, right? Next time, if you guys got a chance to talk to Yoshipi, can we talk about number one, the friend list and number two, the mock letter? Oh, because I find it weird. I find it weird that in 2020, right? Compared to when I first used the internet in uh, 1990, uh, 1998, there was a select or delete all mails, but somehow mock letter, mock letter doesn't have that. So <laughs> yeah, can somebody please ask that, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. the friends list is so bad it's so bad oh we don't need to go on friend list <laughs> we're okay uh, is there anything else you guys want to hit before we uh, we wrap up no no oh. it's not alright All right. I mean we could probably do this show for another couple of hours but I feel like yeah it's you probably could. yeah a couple of things and I heard my baby crying over in the other room and so I'm, I'm starting to get a little concerned but <laughs> i think she's okay um i i guess i will you guys are all gonna do the dungeons right you're gonna go pretty hardcore with them yeah the three of us and yeah, violent, actually, yeah. three of us yeah 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 nice dude. yeah 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 what, what are your hopes and expectations for that are you hoping that takes like Ooh. days or are you hoping that like you clear it in like an hour or two whatever they think i mean it'd there. be cool if it took like the whole like the whole day maybe like two days yeah, yeah. i think it'd be a good balance a day yeah. or a day or two i mean i don't know what you're gonna release right 
I, I, I don't know no, what they're going to release, what, what type of content we expected, right? But just go by time. I hope that it lasts like a day or two. Like I know for four, I, again, again, I don't, I don't go into like difficulty, the dynamic, how can four men be difficult, blah, blah, blah. But like just, I want, I want to get surprised, right? You know, a savage dungeon take, you know, a, a four man savage first time content take two days. I think that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna get three this expansion, right? They're gonna come up with three, right? So we lost the twenty four. We, we lost the forty eight man savage, which is I'm 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 still very upset about that. Like ideally, my my ideal situation is savage. We get five turns. I mean, we kind of get four point five turns today, so I guess we can meet in the middle there. I was hoping like three ultimates, a forty eight man, and then two four man savage dungeon. You know, no. but this time we get three four man savage. We don't we lose the forty eight man savage. So hopefully this. Four Man Savage is good enough for me to like, you know, forget that 48 Man Savage exists this expansion. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what they do. I'm still waiting to see if Ultimate comes up in the next patch, man. I I, I don't I don't know. I got Hopium, man. <laughs> I don't know at this point. We've heard zero. I'm gonna be announcing oh, it soon. They have mm-hmm. to. Any one yeah. of you, any one of you here, the three, the three of you plus Frosty, I guess. Uh, you you are also involved in like World Race, right? Although you don't yeah. participate, but you organize, right? Any one of you here, including me, any four of us here actually dare to put our hands down or money down and say, hey, 6.3, 100% that's an ultimate. No. Yo, I'll, no yo, I'll, yo, I'll, yo I'll, I'll throw down some money. I think there's going to be. I think there's going to be. But 100%? Yeah, you think, yeah. right? But how, nah, much money? I mean, how much money? I'll, you I mean, know? I'll put a little bit down. I'll bet. <laughs> okay. I'll bet 20 subs, 20 gifted subs. All right. All right. I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah. I'll give there's you twenty be gifted one subs. Six... I'll give you twenty gifted subs. If, if there's gonna be one yeah. in, you know, well, it won't be like six point three. It'll be like six point three oh five or whatever. But you know what I mean. Like we'll get an ultimate in six point three. Okay. okay. I think I what think we're going six... to. Okay. Now that you see, they do. They have so much more resource. You look at the amount of content that they put out. You do look at the good content they put out. This expansion. This expansion has the potential to be better than some. Mm-hmm. Like, if not already, do you think we will get a six point five ultimate? No. 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 That's <laughs> wow. I don't no for that. Yeah, that's I don't think gone. So. Either we're getting a six point three yeah, or a six point five ultimate. I think it might be one or the other. Uh, I do think that there is going to be an ultimate this expansion. But they may but they actually still owe us one. But they still owe us one. I mean, no, yeah, but no, that don't no, mean they're no going to give us one. We, you, no yeah, belief. we don't have a debt. They, they don't owe it. They will just give us whatever the now, fuck first they off, make. First off, brother, it wasn't canceled. It was just delayed. Okay? First off, all right? They don't yeah. owe us shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they, they don't care. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Fossey, you early in the show, you said we are not supposed to say anything that might damage your channel's image. To I didn't say now that. You straight up say, I know, shot sure they do this. Like, are you okay? Actually, yeah, I was like, oh man, fuck. If I do this show, I'm, I'm, I'm fucked. You know, uh, but I'm here now, man. It's 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 too late, I guess. Um, but no, I I don't think. Yeah, at this point. They don't feel like they owe us an ultimate. There is no like way they are ever going to feel like they owe us an ultimate. They just couldn't give us one. Because if they start giving us what they owe us, and they start packing that into all of the content, you know how fucking overloaded we would be <laughs> with all the other Yoshi shit. P, I want you to... Yoshi P, uh, uh, the, or the JPs that has influence, I want you guys to watch this mock talk, listen to the guy that has full faith in you, and have a little bit of doubt. I want you to prove him wrong. I believe okay. that's a 6.5 ultimate. I think no, no, it could be 6.5, but not a 6.3. <laughs> not a 6.3. Uh, you got you to keep it realistic, too, because like, the thing is, like, man, uh, like three ultimates per expansion on top of Savage, like people who would actually, like, they, they, they have to take into consideration, like, the, like the, I guess the health issues, too, that would arise. Because, like, people would literally just grind it out, right? And then people just, like, PTO, like, that, it'd just be impossible, right? Yeah, PTO-wise... You yeah. get a, you just get oh, so much time, right? <laughs> you could do two savages and an ultimate, and that's most of your PTO a year. Uh, yeah, like I don't think there's just some, like, people. Plus, people just get burned out. I think like it's just an ultimate for an expansion is always kind of weird. Like something I had an issue with like before too. Like when they planned DSR to be like five point five, I was like, why are they doing this before an expansion? You know, it's only going to be like like quote unquote relevant for like nine months yeah. before it just goes mm-hmm. into like the the next level cap. So. 
I'm thinking that's why. Yeah, that's why. That's why. That's why five point five was never meant to have an ultimate. It's not even because of COVID. But the moment they release, they are not doing an ultimate in five point three. They want to do it in five point five. I think it was already shooting themselves in the back foot already pre COVID, right? It was already like, huh? And you have the number crunch. Why do you want to do double, triple balances and then waste so much development effort, right? Hmm. I guess. I mean, I, 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 I still think we might one day get back the one we owe us. But yeah, interesting to see that, you know, of, of all the people, Frosty didn't believe it. Hmm. I think right now, we're not going to get anything. I, I, anyways, anyways, we can keep on this for like another hour <laughs> discussing mm. these thoughts. Uh, but we could probably go ahead and wrap up for, for today. I, I like this show, man. It felt it felt like a little unchained almost, you know? Hell <laughs> yeah, brother. Yeah. <laughs> almost a little unchained. I felt like I should almost put the name up there and put some graphics up here and stuff, but it's a throwback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, uh, but as we kind of wrap up, uh, I, I want to make sure you say all the shout outs you want to say. People can find you where you are and all that great stuff. Uh, although they probably know where to find you at. Uh, Zeno, you want to go first? Uh, yeah. Um, I want to shout out to you know. You guys, Momo, Arthur's, Frosty. Uh, thanks for having me on. Me. Want to shout out for. Want to shout out to Twitch Chat. I love Twitch Chat. Makes me happy every single day. And uh, shout out to to Leo, my editor. I have a potentially new editor. Shout out to that person too. Gonna. I'm, I have something in the works. Uh, I'm gonna try to make a like a trailer. So it should be kind of cool. Something like that, man. Should be kind of cool, kind of funny. Um, and I want to say that uh, I want to continue to strive to be um, a bald, bearded, energetic, cute strummer uh, for Twitch chat. And kissies. So wholesome. These guy, these guys changed, man. What the yeah. Fuck? <laughs> Who is this guy, man? I'm like, what the... Dude. Get diabetes here Where's Volcano Bone Storm, man? He's changed. Oh yeah! Oh <laughs> yeah. my God! What? Yeah. Where's Volcano oh, Bone Storm? That was like like He's soft dad. Soft dad, dude. Gentle father, whatever his name was. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, Arthas, you want to go? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, like um. Yeah, th- I mean, th- uh, thanks again, right, Frosty? Thank you again. Like every single time I t- I told you this, every single time I came out the episode, I always felt like you regret making the decision to get me on. But you know, this time not only getting me on, but also get like two really awesome players, uh, well respected figure in the community. So uh, yeah, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. But uh, yeah, um, I mean, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a rough. I wouldn't say that rough, but quite rough. Like uh, since you know, ever since COVID until now, right? In terms of like streaming and Final Fantasy fourteen content. So I'm just happy that, you know, shout out to Square Enix, Yoshi P, you know, making, able to make this turn around. Uh, 6.2 has been really pretty fucking good, despite some controversy regarding like balances or difficulty of content they put out. But I hope they continue to do, I, I'm, I'm excited for the next 10 years because at the end of the day, you know, this is what makes me love streaming. The game makes me love streaming and, you know, Echo Zing Zeno, what Zeno says, uh, getting to know more people play with, you know, I'm 43. I don't have a lot of friends in real life that share the same passion with me. All my friends are working adults. <laughs> you know, they have kids, they have their own life. I'm just a lone 40, 41, 42 year old guy that play video games. That sounds pretty fucking sad, you know? But, you know, able to play this game, streaming, knowing you guys, talk to you guys here, talk about the game. Fucking hell, Momo is 25. I still cannot fucking believe it. <laughs> like, I'm able to meet more people around like way more age group, but enjoy the same game. And then not just the players, right? But also the viewers, uh, people watching Mock Talk, watching all our three stream, you know, making me feel a lot better every day, just like playing the game. Let, uh, uh, stream, uh, playing a game uh, and streaming, yeah. So big shout out to everybody involved, yeah. Yeah, no, oh, man, it's always a blast. I, th- I, w- I will say, I think you do have the most uh, appearances on Mock Talk out of every single guest. I'm, I'm 99% sure of that. Uh so there is no question on whether I want you to come on or not. <laughs> so, uh, Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Momo, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Frosty, and everybody on the show for having me on. And uh, 
think Arthur said it too, but yo, thanks uh, to Square Enix, because I mean, we wouldn't be here without, you know, their game, you know, we wouldn't even be on the show. Who knows where we'd be, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks to Twitch Chat as well, because Twitch Chat always, always supports us, and we wouldn't be anywhere without them either. Yeah, 100% the viewers, the uh, Final Fantasy fourteen Twitch community has been, like, fantastic in supporting mm-hmm. all of us <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so definitely thanks to all those guys, uh, gals, and everything. Uh, so I, I do, uh, you know, there is a possibility that we will have a little bit more on this channel besides Mog Talk coming up soon. Uh, from my end here, uh, I may start streaming some of the prog later night stuff. Uh, I was actually thinking after this conversation, maybe trying to do Party Finder Healer. Uh, oh, I've never yeah, done it before, dude. man. I've never oh, done it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like, I'm kind of like, I, I like healing for healing's sake, right? Uh, so I'm starting to debate that, and that's going to be a pretty big challenge for, for me. Um, Momo, what healer should I be playing? Sage. Sage? Okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. So. Uh, Yo, somebody bring out a book point in chat. You plan to do anything for the Criterion Dungeon? No. <sighs> <laughs> so here's the thing there there has to be some level and base for the content being something that could exist for it before making something for it too right i don't want to like wake up and it's like an extreme and it was cleared in an hour and i'm like i've just organized all this shit and what do i do now i planned all this true, time true. for these people to commentate over stuff I'm like there's nothing I, I can't i can't like plan for something i have no clue what it's actually going to be uh so there may be the same level of regard that we had for ba uh or uh dsr or was it D- drs fuck i'm getting all my acronyms all fucked up and everything else uh where you know if it's if i wake up and it's, things haven't been cleared by the time i wake up i'll start trying to track it but that might be the extent that it would do i don't know if i could i couldn't put together a whole event for that but we are going to have some like Stay tuned for some stuff coming up in the future because a lot of really cool stuff's going to happen with all those uh, world race streams and everything else that we're doing. But yeah. Uh, guys, again, thank you for coming on. It's fantastic. It's been a while. Uh, for you know some of you, Zeno, you know, I haven't had you on in a little while too. Uh, Momo, it's been same. a while. Mm-hmm. It's been mm-hmm. a bit. It was a blast having both of you guys on. Arthas, of course, is always a blast having you on too. Um, we're probably going to do a non-raid show next week. <laughs> I don't know. Island Sanctuary. Or, Yo, you know, that content's lit. I mean, it's it, good. It, it can be boring for a little bit, but for the most yeah. part, dude, it's fucking lit, man. I really enjoy it. We'll see. We'll Off, see stream. It Off stream. Off stream. Anyway. Oh, really? Dude, yesterday when we were in PF2 hours, I did Island Sanctuary. It was such a productive time. Yeah. Well, all the shit that I do on it, like I like I've already set up, so I just like wait. I'm just like time dude. I just wait. Relax. This point. Put some yeah. lo-fi hit. I hit ranked the 10 the other day. Congrats, dude. Sure. Really? Yeah, dude. Dude, I can fly around my island, dude. I could come to your island and fly, I think. <laughs> I'm ranked 10, man. Hell yeah. I made my lighthouse and everything, dude. I'm oh, yeah, dude. I don't want to spoil it, but <laughs> the mammoths do some funny stuff on the lighthouse, yeah. All right. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what we'll do next weekend. We'll see. Uh, I'll give it a day to, to ponder. Uh, or will be some spicy drama or something that comes up over the week, and maybe I have to do a show about that. Uh, I don't know. But thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been Blast. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead, and we'll, we'll raid somebody here in a second, so stay tuned for a moment. Uh, don't, don't just run off just yet. And uh, thank you all for watching. Until next time, be good, keep cool, stay frosty, all that crap. See you next time. Bye! <laughs>